have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. Hal Sparks. Actor, comedian, and multimedia personality. And I'm all out of bubble. Hal Sparks. All right, let's do this. All right, Johnny Million, how are you? Happy let's Saturday. Let's do this. Yeah, that's right. Have uh, are, are, have you recovered? My question is, have you recovered from the 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 sort of like high speed slam of the joy of watching a functioning SOTU with some of the highest ratings in the history of ever, which is very upsetting to Donald Trump on its own. That is a plus. Yeah. And then the uh, throwing the rental car in reverse while going 100 miles an hour GOP response by the Stepford wife from Alabama, who th- thinks it's a miracle. Yeah. Um, that a, uh, a Sarah Palin knockoff could get elected in Alabama in 2024. Um, yeah, she is, <coughs> like, oh, yeah. fringe doesn't even qualify. Right. Yeah, it was, that was uh, super special. Now, um, I don't know if it was, there's a lot of back and forth about whether it was uh, coaching. You know, she was coached. She was overcoached. Some people get overcoached, I've heard. And, um, uh, we don't know uh, what what the what and the why and the wherefore uh, she acted that way. Why why anyone thought that was a She's good idea? She's apparently told that story many times before. The lady in the shoebox room with the awful. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. so it's one of it's one of her go tos. Uh, again, for those that didn't follow, I did the entire thing on my live stream last night. I did her entire oh. response. It took the whole show because of the garbage yeah. in it. Um, and uh, I got I. I think the part that stood out the most to me was that she tried to horrify us by this woman's plight who was trafficked by cartels by trying to convince us to vote for a guy that would deport that woman with no asylum hearing. So um, she also uh, wanted After to- After going ta- on a cruise to uh, molest her. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, obviously, well, it depends on if, you know, it's if she's his type. I mean, obviously, uh, like- E. Jean Carroll was so much not Donald Trump's type, he mistook her for his ex-wife um, during the period where she was his wife. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff all around. Um, so, um, <clears throat> Johnny, I have a question for you. Do you do a- any bad impersonations? Oh, yeah, I do so many. Yeah? Uh-huh. Like, do you, give, me a, give me a once around the ride. Um, uh, let's one. see. Just, um Get to the chopper. Get to the right. chopper now. Sure, sure. Um, and then, um, uh, the ice is going to break. Oh, yeah, sure. Dead zone. Christopher yeah. Walken. The ice yeah. is going to break. It's going to break. Yeah. That's good. All right, sure. Um, and uh, uh, people! People, let me hear you! Oh, it's actually pretty good, Paul Stanley, if you really think about Thank it. Thank you. I, yeah, yeah, it's something I, I quite frankly think it's rock solid. And I um, can really derail my um, the singer in Mars, Venus, Moon if in between songs. I just go right into the mic and go, people, here's yeah. a song. Yeah, <laughs> I hear people up here in outer space. Yeah, like to drink a little bit of alcohol. Right, that, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> boom, 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 right. Take it back, take it back. Um, so why do I, you ask know, me to do all my amazing impressions? Well, you know, it's because, uh, you know, being able to do voices is a talent. You know, it is. There are some people who are fantastic. They're the they're the rich littles of the world. You know, um, you know, people who can, whether good or bad, put on an, uh, you know, be someone else to magically turn themselves into someone else. Jamie, put up on the screen that thing about uh, the people who can make themselves into other people. Put it on the big screen up there. Put it, put up that video where I'm. Uh, yeah, I love um, that you've got a tribble on each shoulder. Yeah, totally. Well, it's a long hair thing. I get it only works when I have a pony. Did you get people a trim the by the way? It looks like a, a little tighter. No, actually, it's. Uh, oh, look at all that. Yeah, it's okay. just wave. It's just wavy and crinkled up because of the humidity. I can't do anything with my hair. And the people, thank you for letting the people of radio know that. I thought I could slip by today. Um, without having to deal with uh all right with, before you get too deep into your point because i mean i will derail you will you, derail but, it sure yeah yeah um i was watching a nerd hailing clip the other day and i laughed out loud because it was a nerdy woman yes which is a uh like a reimagining of, of pretty the woman. um 
pretty woman. And there's a lot. There's a line in there where you sing, "Are you homeschooled just like me?" <laughs> yeah. Ah! <laughs> Thank you. Um. Yeah. Uh, the the following line is, "I have a peanut allergy," <laughs> and <laughs> that is one of my proudest rhymes in my entire life. Um. Man, oh yeah. man, nerdy. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a good time. We, it's available on iTunes. Thank you for reminding everyone. We are perpetually planning a video for it and we've never gotten around to it, but I think it's actually going to happen because I have Summer's dancers from her show and Lady Like working on a number that will be oh, in the video itself, Dancing Nerd Girls. So it should be, um, yeah. and in the back of my head, uh, just for the record, and I'm going to, uh, like, uh, we're working on a, uh, a Panama comic-con overlay comic-con okay. like because it fits oh. mm -hmm. so that's gonna work it's like a you're strictly your weird owl strictly van halen yes right but and and uh and only for you know special occasions obviously uh right, you know, right, right. Being a right, 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 but also uh, uh literally comic-con one came about because i was jokingly uh saying keep your movie props clean at one point Oh, in nice. reference to someone, yeah, and I was like, "All right, well, there's, movie there's, props, clean, clean. yeah." Like there's that. something, there's something there. So uh, that will be happening eventually. Um, the reason I say that is because I, you know, I, I sometimes, I think people sometimes forget just how insane Donald Trump is, and um, I, and there are all these scandals that years ago would have wrecked anybody else. Right. Anybody else, for whatever reason, uh, Trump gets to dodge, uh, you know, bullets that would have taken out other people. Mostly. Seriously. Every time I think he's done for, I'm like, no, nope, that's just that's another feature, not a bug for his lunatic friends. Ex exactly. And I I got to say, um, a lot of it, he seems to think it's because he's smart or good at something. Mm. I, the reality is, and let, let's be, because let's be completely honest, the reality is, is that there's so many other people engaged in the same criminal crap he's involved in, and especially in real estate in New York, that th there's been this issue, I think, with DAs and people in New York that if we pull the thread, this whole sweater is going to unravel. And so yeah. they've left him alone because he's obviously mobbed up, you know, in terms of some of yep. his buildings and construction. Um, his, he, you know, he bankrupt three casinos. Everybody else thinks it was one. It's actually three casino companies. Wow. Some of his partners died in a helicopter crash on their way back from New Jersey. Like all of it just reeks of a like knockoff Sopranos episode. Serious. Um, I don't like yeah. that at all. And, um, so much, uh, let's see if I can, uh, um, yeah, this is, I want to. I want to play a piece of this um, audio. Do you see? Um, oh, somebody, somebody's here. Oh, oh, Texas Paul's in the background. Okay, I will bring he him is. on in just a moment, um, which is very exciting. Um, I want to throw in this thing. Where is it? The so Trump. Yeah, hold on. Let's see if I can do this. Um, this is. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this. This this person. Let's see. His um, way of pulling himself hold out on, of him with all his. I'm excited. Okay. Uh, oh, you can't hear it on your end. Okay. No, I, I can't it. hear anything. Okay. All right. I will play it on uh, the, uh, the on the other computer then. So, um, you're familiar with John Barron, right? Oh yeah, yeah. John yes. Barron. He's uh, yeah, he's uh, a real estate mogul who makes public uh, um, press well, no. calls too. No, technically, uh, John Barron is the uh, PR person for the Trump Oh, he's the PR person for a real estate mogul. Yeah, exactly. There's another okay. guy, though. Uh, do you know John Miller? No. Okay. John Miller well, it is a VP of the Trump Organization. Uh, famously, he's the one who called People Magazine... And told uh, and told them that uh, Trump has a lot of options and he's not ready to settle down with uh, Marla Maples. I'll see if I can uh, bring this part of it in. It's uh, he, you know, he. There's this, I guess, this issue where let's see if I can do this. Um, 
he did he where trump calls in i'm yeah. in that he hold on he calls in to people magazine this was an uh from a frontline thing piece a bit ago um and he yeah here you go this this is this is uh, uh, you should be able to hear this one this was his way of pulling himself out of himself and oh, that's right. touting can't himself it's to on the wrong reporters. I will get it eventually. It's driving me crazy. Okay, so Miller, uh, you now know Miller. Miller's the guy who he called in pretending to talk to someone uh, or pretending to uh, be a friend of Donald Trump's, touting what a great philanderer he was and and just how the ladies love uh, uh, DJT, right? He was LLDJT, yeah, yeah. right? That's that's Miller. Then there is uh, a, a guy, and I think a lot of people know those folks. Um, it, it, or may be familiar. Are you familiar with a Mr. Green by any chance? No. Um, from from a similar story. So I no, I just found I just I just found this out because I'm constantly even amazed. Donald Trump would Could you hear that? With all his unbridled uh, ego, couldn't bring himself. Okay, it's low though, but it's yes, there. Yes, yes. Okay, good. So, um, he's somebody that has a lot of options, and frankly, uh, you know, he gets called by everybody. He gets called by everybody in the book, in terms of women. And uh, like, oh. well, he gets called by a lot of people. Yeah. When we, uh, so that's Trump talking to People Magazine as John Miller, uh, okay, who's, who's his own friend. Um, and then uh -huh. there's, again, there's Mr. Green. Mr. Now, Mr. Green was a new character I was not familiar with. You know who Mr. Green is? He's no, not. No, to me too. He's not one of Donald Trump's, uh, you know, performative PR characters meant to fake his, uh, his uh, I guess, his many trysts with the ladies, making him the the... Hugh Hefner of the 90s, even though Hugh Hefner was still alive in the 90s. Um, it's not, he's not um, uh, John Barron, who, you know, lied and got Trump onto the Forbes uh, 400. No, no. Uh, Mr. Green is a pseudonym used by Fred Trump, Donald Trump's father, oh, who my. would be an okay. artificial representative for the Trump organization when Donald, when young Donald was still, you know, flunking out of Horton. This is a family tradition. And so at some point, I can't wait for Eric Trump to call up doing his best Gary Busey, uh, which you know is in his jeans, uh, oh, yeah. and go, hey, I know, <laughs> hey, listen here, I know a whole lot about these Trumps and they are dynamite. Let me tell you what, this is going to be some of the most... Let me tell you, they are rich, they are powerful, and the ladies love them. I got to tell you, fear means uh, freaking every American right out. I just mean it honestly. MAGA means make Americans get anxiety. That's what it's for, and I'm trying to fix it. So uh, that's uh, we got to take a break. When we come back, um, our dear friend uh, Texas Paul will be joining Texas us. Paul. And I don't want anybody to worry. Mrs. Texas Paul has made, printed out a little sign that says no effing cussing on the radio. So I think we're going to be all right. I think we're going to make it. Uh, we'll be back right after this. It's the House Parks Radio Program, Mega Worldwide. This is a great show. Like and subscribe. Come on. I don't like Eric Trump. That was a lie. So now I've got to uh, – I'm going to put in um, – Texas ball in here real quick, if I may. There we go. And um, uh, like I, there's a thing in this where you can go into what's called studio mode, and yes. uh, and uh, do stuff off camera so that it's all nice and pretty and everything. Well, unfortunately, when I do that, uh, it crashes the program, which I've had to deal with every time I bring a guest on the last week. So I am everything will be out in the open with me just fidgeting. Sorry for the BTS, folks. I'm so sorry. All right, now we go to uh, goes to there. We go. Now I got to put him in here, and we'll be ready to go. Um, how you doing, Paul? You all right? Wonderful, sir. Wonderful. I'm Excellent. terribly sorry. I'm late. Um, you're not. Your people reach out. I'm not. Early. I thought I was. No, you're am right. I? Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll come back in thirty, guys. Thank you. Yeah, you're good. All good. Perfecto. 
I'm sorry, man. I did. <laughs> no, it's like here when it's the first hour, I usually do guess it. The second hour, Boston Brian has done it too. It's totally fine because I love having you, so it's not a problem. But I like to set up the first hour and then the uh, first half of the first hour and then bring people on so that people know they're coming and all that kind of stuff. And I can kind of establish am... what we're talking about. And it's totally fine. Fear not. Glad to have you. I've got it. And Johnny Millions background is uh, coming back. Big. Okay. Thank you. I got to make him a little bigger. There you go. Welcome back to the Hal Sparks radio program. Mega worldwide. There it is. All right. Now we're, now we're cooking with gas. We got Johnny Million. We got Texas Paul. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Boston Brian might even be in the chat at this point. There's just so he much is. fun. I saw him. Yeah, too much fun to be had. Um, please, by the way, uh, subscribe and support uh, all, uh, all of our guest shows. Uh, RealTexasPaul.com, I think, is the site, if I, if I get that right. And then, of course, yes, it's, it's Johnny Million on YouTube and, and Twitch. And, and of course, uh, Dem Boston Brian and uh, Boston Brian and Boston and Brian has his. We're trying to. We're trying to build him a brand, you know, so that he can squash it all into one thing and it, you know, it's it's uniform or whatever. Meanwhile, I'm trying to Hal Sparks as good as Hal Sparks and Hal Sparks when we're Hal Sparksing. Uh it's the that's the one lesson I did learn from watching a bunch of old Trump videos in my kind of review of all the awful we have sort of forgotten. Because that's one of the things that, you know, first uh, well, let's dive into this first. Since, since Texas Paul is here and I haven't had a chance to talk to him since the State of the Union and the response, your your thoughts, Texas Paul, I'm pointing to the wrong side, your thoughts, Texas Paul, on that potentiality the the, the or, and that contrast, um, the, the future of the GOP, the future of the election, and uh, how the so too went and all those things uh, go. You know? <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, the whole Joe Biden is old narrative just blew up in their faces. Now the new narrative is Joe Biden's on drugs. He's he's hopped up on the speed, man. He got right. that Bolivian marching powder. <laughs> Which it sounds like something that they, you know, I, I got to say, it, it sounds like projection. Like we always talk about the, the projection aspect of these guys and um, and. I, it sounds a little hinky. I gotta say, it sounds it sounds like they're like either wishful thinking or they've run out of Adderall at Mar-a-Lago and and yeah. they're they're looking for another source. Maybe Trump's gonna call him and and give him advice on uh, Israel just so he could go. P.S. Can you give Ronnie Jackson access to the drug safe again? Because we're our supplies are getting <laughs> real low. And the, of course, the curse of the Republican State of the Union rebuttal is still alive and well. I mean, you got Man. Katie Britt, who they've just been grooming and grooming by. A lot of folks don't even know who Katie Britt is because they, th this has been a behind the scenes prepare. Mm -hmm. And this was supposed to be her big rollout. Where, and, mm -hmm. and they did this nonsense of, oh, she's just an everyday housewife sitting in her 6,300 square foot yeah. house. Right. Uh, with her thirteen thousand dollars sub zero refrigerator, refrigerator, right. and and her maid, and you know just your average housewife, man. I mean, you know. mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah, with Wesley sitting off to the side, and I gotta say, like for all them, and, and nothing, you know, people don't choose their names off times when they're you know their parents and whatever, but like when you know when you've got these kind of like Alabama Republicans, me and my husband. Wesley, um, it just doesn't kind of ring true, you know, mm -hmm. like with, with the, with the, uh, um, in deference to you, the cowboy aesthetic as it were that they put off. Now, um, I, uh, like I said, I did the whole thing. I covered it yesterday. It was madness. I think the one thing that stood out to me was that she pointed out all the same problems that Joe Biden was addressing that the average American goes through, but basically was arguing for not doing anything about it. Exactly. Don't pass it. Don't pass exactly. it. fix it. Yeah. Like, amazing. What kills me, man. And by the way, Johnny, good to see you, man. Good to see you. I haven't seen you, you since the last show. Um, the thing that kills me uh, about all of this is, is how fake it all is. I, yeah. Things are great. The economy is amazing. Mm -hmm. Inflation is plummeting. Real wages. Did you see the the graph that Ron Philip uh, Philipkowski put out the other day on real wages, no. dividing it by quartile? Mm -hmm. 
the majority yeah. of wage growth has been in the bottom 50 percent. Right. I mean, things in this country are freaking amazing right now, minus a few little things that could be fixed by just right. passing a couple bills. Right. And the Republicans entire message is you're going to die. Yeah. Everything's horrible. Yeah. And the immigrants going to break in your house you. and ruin your 401k. Right. That's well, that again. <laughs> So uh, they, they were talking like inflation's a good marker. Like she literally came out and said, "We have the worst inflation that we've had in in forty years." Um, I mean, anything to say we don't have uh, the longest un uh, stretch of unemployment under four percent um, in you know in sixty years, um, and mm -hmm. the record. I think we're headed towards the record. This is that's uh, I mean, it's, you know, at least in that with this population size and all that kind of stuff, it's going to set a record. But we're looking at the way inflation is going down somewhere in the order of uh, like 2.5% by about October. And that's that's where the Fed thinks it's going. It's where Yellen thinks it's going. It's one of the reasons why Biden's smiling while everybody else is fretting. Because they, you know, a lot of this stuff is you got to follow the physics of the policy, where it's going. And, and you got to be there when it lands. You definitely have to be able, be good at the messaging part of it. But in a lot of these cases, they just, you know, I just don't know if any of these folks know that, you know, policies take a while to implement. It takes a while to trickle down. And then once it's trickled down to the, to, like, it's actually started working, then people start talking about it. Once they feel safe to talk about it, you know, a, a, a positive change usually takes people longer to talk about than a negative change. So there's always that drag and they know it. It's why they passed the infrastructure bill when they did. It's why it was such a priority because it was going to be one of the things that leads to this. The real wage growth we're talking about comes directly from what you're talking about. Like the very, the, the people who have, are getting these jobs from the infrastructure growth and the projects, most of them are, you know, don't need a college degree. These are, you know, uh, you know, vocational and trade school and and rural working people, and they know it. The, the White yeah, House how the, my, the point that can't be lost in all of this. I mean, because there's a lot of great. We could we could do an entire show just talking about great freaking things that are going on, yep. but the story has to get out there. The narrative has to get out there. This whole border crisis thing, right? is to try to manufacture a crisis when right. things are freaking great because Republicans have nothing to run on. They've passed no legislation. They've done nothing. And like you said, Katie Britt's entire sales pitch was things are awful and let's do nothing. Be I mean, afraid. yeah, be afraid at, at, when things are amazing and fantastic and don't notice that things are amazing and fantastic. This entire Border nonsense is a waste. We had a we had a surplus here of thirty billion dollars this year in the state of Texas. They can I say pissed on the radio? They yeah, pissed yeah, it yeah, away. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got my sign, man. I've got my I don't sign. Don't think I'm allowed right to say that I want to piss on Paul. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, I don't you can't think say, I that. say that. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. Oh, no, that's a bad Ever. context. <laughs> I can want what I can want things. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks very much. That, that, that helped. Yeah, we'll no shit, man. I'm, no. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> oh, look, he just did it again. Oh, did you see what you flowing. triggered? All right, we got to take a break. We'll be back right after this, and we will talk about uh, the good things that are happening, and that's part of the excitement that uh, I think everybody's feeling. One of the big issues, see what happens. Johnny started this, and Paul followed, and now I'm the, I've am the. got to be the camp counselor. How has that happened? Mr. Adult Language himself has to tell everybody hey, else to mind. I made Paul swear? Yes, you did. I'm you sorry. Hear it? I'm sorry. What did you say? Uh, say it again, Paul. No, don't. We're going no. to say it during break. No. We'll be back right after this. It's the <laughs> no. House Marks Radio Beep Authorities program. That be, I respect Mega me. Beep that was a mistake. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. <laughs> Hold on. Wait for Chicago. Oh, Let's go. Oh, I'm sorry, nice man. Going, Johnny. There we go. <laughs> it's a, it's what happened because Johnny makes the makes the. Uh, the, the the pee joke and then that sets off everything. It's a cascade. You're a bad influence. You're then contributing what did Paul to say? the delinquency of a Texan. I was too busy. He no. said shit. Yay. <laughs> I know. It, it, like, I'm sorry. I'll, I'm <laughs> so right. sorry. I've had worse. I, I, I literally have the sign taped up right here and I, I know. still blew it. But that doesn't prepare you when someone's like, but I want to piss on Paul. Nope, that'll mm, yeah, like oh okay. I, like, uh, how are you oh, gonna react? All... I don't know how yeah. I would react. 
Right. <laughs> oh god. We're back in time. I oh just I just want to say I think you're all a mistake. And if I could wipe you all out, I would. And I just might. <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna just do the rest of the show like this. I don't hate it. It's kind of good. Um, um, I... Attention, attention, stop what you're doing. Hey, welcome back. Because we're coming back to the Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide. Oh my God. They went a little crazy with it, and I appreciate it. Now let's get back with Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide. Uh, welcome back to Shecky's, everybody. We're having a clean comedy night here. I got to remind some of the comics that are up here tonight. Uh, they do got to mind your manners. We got a small church group in the back, and uh, a lot of them just stampeded out. So, uh, yeah, uh, watch okay, their language and try man, not I'm to so slip sorry. up. Get it? All right. Um, so and l- and let me restress to the powers that be. I respect your authority. That was just a mistake. That was Understood. just a mistake. An not excited a- utterance, and it will not happen again. That's right. Excited utterances are okay, and and it's hard not to get excited in these essences. I have to say, I was I was about to say before you uh, you uh, potty mouths got uh, unleashed. Um, one of the other reasons Texas is very upset right now, Texas Paul. I don't know if you know this. But the the oldest woman in the world is a Texan, and she's black, and that's very difficult for a lot of these folks in the in the Ted Cruz world. She's uh, I want to say she's a hundred and sixteen, um, something like that. <laughs> And um and and the worst thing is they, they asked her what her secret was and she's like be nice to people it's just awful commie oh, nonsense last thing they need you know what I mean hear. yeah so um her birthday that, is in July that's the truth man just yeah, it, don't stress chill yeah, you live a yeah. long time that's right it's not uh, it's it, we're not reinventing the wheel now uh so we've gotten through Katie Britt and we've gotten through to you know we have we haven't had a chance to touch on um the Biden um so too. I was actually surprised that while they could, they did not go into, and this is why I think we're we're touching on this point about the the economic numbers. That the very same, you know, you know, the next day they may have been aware, they may have not, but they revised up the numbers for jobs in uh, January, seventy five thousand, like new, even better jobs numbers came out than the ones that were already upsetting to Maria Bartiromo. She got to be. She got to have like an aftershock from that earthquake um, where mm-hmm. she, you know, she had to go back on and like, but maybe it's creating too many jobs. Maybe that's the problem. There's too many jobs right now. That's why inflation, people have too much money to spend. Um, this is just going to keep happening, by the way, um, because productivity, wages and job growth is is still climbing. We don't we have enough job openings to absorb somewhere in the order of like six times the number of migrants coming here that's the other issue it's it you know it's it's kind of shocking yeah and and you know what kind of really makes me angry is when you look at the statistics if you go back and you look at obama's month-to-month job statistics they always say it's oh it's it's 110,000 that's all he ever created 110,000 a month because they factor in that nightmare that when he came into office in 2008 remember when the republicans were saying let the auto companies die and all that stuff that they were saying yeah he had to eat those negative numbers Mm -hmm. but biden they give you biden's numbers at 265 a month and say well you can't count what happened in covid because it was COVID. But no, his real job creation is over 400,000 a month. It's never right. been done before. Right. I mean, he's just literally in three years blown everybody out of the water. But they're saying, well, you can't get credit for those COVID jobs. Well, then quit quit, quit screwing over Obama on right. his numbers. Right. He had to well, eat those numbers when he came into office from, well, from George remember, Bush's disaster. Right. But remember, uh, Trump was doing this whole, like, he just recently did this whole thing about, like, Biden's good numbers are because he's on, they're running on our fumes, which by the way, apparently the fumes were after the recession that Biden supposedly caused. I don't know how the fumes make a comeback. It seems, I mean, par for the course for Trump world, obviously there's the dude's entire life is run on fumes. Let's be honest, but the, but there has to be something, um, 
to, you know, there's definitely a rollover effect. And this is why, you know, the American system is a, it's a giant tanker or a cruise ship or a battleship, not a speedboat. And you can't yank it in one direction. You, you know, it, stuff has to play out. And so Trump benefits from Obama, the cleanup that Obama did. Obama was damaged by it. They use it against, like, one of the points they bring up all the time is that more people went on food stamps under Obama than any president. Yeah, in the first year, because the economy had crashed. Before any of his policies and his ability to make stuff right started kicking in. It was just, uh, there's a level of like ignorance and cruelty that they're, they're fine with. So Trump. They do it, the same you know, thing with the border. That's right. Yeah. Well, in the border issue. The border again, numbers. Lo, uh, lo, Title, Title 42. The same people came over and over and over and over yep. and over again because of Title 42. They weren't processing these people. They were just shoving them back across the border. So the same people came over six, eight, ten times. So mm -hmm. they counted every time they came over as though it was a new person. So they right. tell you, oh, we had eight million people. Come. No, you didn't. Yeah. No, you did not. You, you, if you if you take out the recidivism caused by Title 42, um, the Biden and Trump have almost the same number of people crossing the border. It, and and Trump had COVID, which stopped everybody, right? That stopped that was the the biggest factor in stopping migration worldwide for mm -hmm. a period of time was COVID. Trump had that to benefit to lower his numbers artificially in his final year in office. And even with this huge surge in unprecedented numbers storyline that we've been hearing, the actual number of people crossing through are, are equivalent to any other four-year stretch in the last two decades. And again, the recidivism, you know, creates the false number. But that's why you're hearing, like, they're moving, they're preparing a building for 4,000 migrants to be held or, or they're, you know, New York is dealing with 100,000 migrants or whatever you, that, are, that are going there because they're tracking them now because we know they're there. Before, they would just go there and live under, you know, under the table, they would operate under the table getting paid and working kitchens and that kind of stuff all throughout the now because of this insistence on checking everybody that comes through and 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 tagging them and doing all this stuff that in many ways started under Obama increased like crazy under Trump and then has continued under Biden where we want to know who people are we now know so the number is larger because we actually know there aren't that kind those kind of gotaways like we used to have because we're we're effectively tracking everybody now the mm -hmm. uh, the you know the big question will be you know uh, the big question obviously is why do you need razor wire if the wall works so well and also uh, why did the wall you know wire is post wall border worse than pre wall border that would be the question I think more well, than the razor anything. wire is made up stuff too everything Republicans do is just fabrication it's just right. fabrication the razor wire if you go to Google Earth and you look mm -hmm. and go to Shelby Park Eagle Pass. You'll see Shelby Park is a tiny it's it's a, it's a it's a couple hundred yards of riverfront. That's it. Right. And that's the only place there's there's razor wire. And they they use it for a photo op. That's what they're using my te my National right. Guard for. They've wasted 8 billion dollars on my National Texas National Guard being, being down there so that mm -hmm. they could take pictures in front of a couple hundred yards of razor wire and pretend that Abbott isn't a weak failure. Right. And, and try to create this false ginned up crisis. It's a photo op. It's a stage. Well, and, it's, at it's one little tiny the part. and at the expense of the Texas National Guard, because there's been repeated stories about people because of Op Operation Lone Star, you know, taking their own lives because they can't quit and they their businesses are failing and their relationships are failing because they're being kept there to watch a dead part of the border. It's there's a there's a level of like like cruelty and servitude that Republicans, and again, this maybe goes to the authoritarian ideology that they seem to cling to, is that I should be able to direct the military or anybody who's dumb enough to go into the military, according to Donald Trump, to do whatever the hell I want, legal or illegal. I should have total immunity to send the SEAL Team 6 to kill an, an American citizen on American soil who's never been even accused of a crime because they're a political uh, you know, opponent of mine. His lawyers argued that point in court and the only re and and they'd have to impeach me and remove me from office i guess to be able to try me in the first place it's nuts like it, it, but it, it but it it's par for the course um 
So before we get up to the this tying it to the State of the Union, you were you were talking about Biden and the State of the Union. You get back on track there. Yeah. Um, the, the comment that he made about the border bill that they they negotiated on in the border bill, the majority of immigration. I mean, the overwhelming like ninety nine nine point nine 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 percent of immigration that, that's done illegally yeah. comes through the ports of entry. We're talking about Laredo, one of the lar- largest land ports in the world. We had money set aside to buy backscatter ra- uh, uh, um, backscatter radar, mm-hmm. where you could just look right through a damn truck. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't even have to stop the truck; just yep. slow it down, and they can scan the the truck. Use AI to see what's inside it. You don't even need you know people sitting there watching the radar. You can just use AI, and they were paying for this technology and drug drug sniffing equipment. Mm-hmm. that are better than dogs. We're yeah. all part of this bill, but the Republicans needed this fictional stage. So they're wasting billions of dollars putting the National Guard down on the border that does nothing, has no authority to arrest anybody, just mm-hmm. standing there for props. They're wasting billions on that and then blocking the federal government from actually doing something that would work at the ports of entry right? at the same exact time. Well, it's that insanity. Work. Yeah, agreed. And it did not work out the way they thought it would because uh, since the border bill went down, the the polls show that the American people are now blaming the Republicans for stopping you know, for for the border crisis as it is, and they blame them for for you know stopping the solution. That's going to continue until they bring that bill to the floor and pass it. And Republicans, the, the pressure is going to continue to increase because now Democrats have a direct answer. Well, then pass the damn bill. Fix it. They were even chanting it at the at the State of the Union. Um, and there, there are two other factors that I think we got we got to talk about. One is this was not the Joe Biden that they were that they had the Republicans had advertised would show up who can't finish a sentence and can't put two words together and can't find his way off the stage. One of the only reasons he couldn't find his way out of the room because he had too many friends there to talk to. He was having substantive <laughs> conversations um, on policy with people, something Trump is incapable of doing even with his own advisors, much less, you know, randos on the Senate and House floor. Um, and then, of course, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, go ahead. It's like, you know, George Carlin. George Carlin said it perfectly. Imagine how stupid the, you know how stupid the average American is. Now, uh, imagine half, half of them of are them. dumber than that. Yeah. Half of them are dumber than that. I mean, listen to, to to what these Republicans say and do. They told you Joe Biden was losing it. Joe Biden, you know, was old. He couldn't talk. He couldn't keep a straight frame of mind. And he smoked them at the yeah. State of the Union. So what do they say? Do they say, well, we lied to you about who Joe Biden was. We, sorry, you know, we lied. We made yeah. that crap up. No, they say, oh, he's on drugs. He's got to right. be on drugs. They hyped him up. And, and Ronnie Jackson, of all people, the guy right. that's been claiming to be Captain a rear Bill admiral Mill. that was busted down to captain, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that ran the freaking Adderall candy store out of the White House, had the balls to stand up. I can say that, right? I yes, can say yeah. that, right? That's, that's right. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. To stand up and actually say, oh, they they, they, they drugged uh, Joe Biden too much. He's angry. Yeah, you'd know about that, wouldn't you? You're sitting there, right. Mr. Adderall well, man for Donald Trump. Yeah. That's been the, that's, you know, Ron Filipowski, I think, was bringing that up on, in an interview I saw recently, too, about uh, uh, I think that he sees a different Trump from the, the kind of shuffling Trump versus the speech Trump that has to do with whatever medication Trump seems to be on that makes him sweaty and agitated. And, and uh, it's basically just old fashioned speed is the idea. And so they assume that, you know, a well-rested Joe Biden who hasn't had 19 things to do that day, he's only had 12 and is only dealing with, you know, two battlefronts in terms of, you know, foreign aid and foreign uh, allies, um, you know, can't, you know, he must be, uh, you know, on something to give a speech. The, and, and that he's angry. The, the other thing that states is that they don't believe that there's something to be angry about, that there, that anybody would be angry about a woman's right to choose being taken away or that somebody would would be angry yeah. about, uh, you know, any number of things, including January 6th, that, that you wouldn't be disgusted by Donald Trump saying Vlad, to Vladimir Putin, I hope he, you know, he uh, do everything you want. I tell him to just do whatever he wants to you. Like that should make you angry in theory, if you care about it, but they don't. So it's like an alien experience to them. They're like, why would anybody be mad about that? And 
that's that's part of their issue. What what also happened, of course, was the hour after the SOTU was the biggest, single biggest hour of uh of campaign donations to Biden um so far in the in the campaign. That that right afterwards, people decided to donate to the campaign. It was their single biggest haul, and they've amassed an enormous amount of money since. Um, all money, by the way, that will go to his reelection, and any extra will go to the DNC and some of and, and down ticket fights. Whereas Lara Trump is now uh, the co-chair of the <laughs> RNC and has pledged that. Donations will go to support Donald Trump's legal fights, which I am for. I support that because that's money that will not go to down ticket races and getting out the vote during the election in a time when they're already on the back foot and Donald Trump is staring down the barrel of a 70% turnout maximum on the Republican side for him. I mean, I don't even think they've come to terms with those numbers yet. We got to take a break. We'll be back right after this. More of Texas Paul and Johnny Million. Um, and then uh, Phil, our dear friend Philip Bittner will be joining us at the top of the next hour from Ukraine. We'll be talking about a bunch of stuff that's going on there, including they've just received a million rounds of ammunition. And Donald Trump might have accidentally made it possible for Joe Biden to help them. We'll be back. No. All right. I've got to feed my kitty. No euphemisms on the air. You can say it. I'm feeding my cat. You say, and I almost said when when Paul said, can I say balls? I was like, yes, but I can't say I want to put my balls on Texas. <laughs> that's that's good. That, that's Damn the, the Carlin thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that was the that's the that's the George Carlin thing. It's, a, you know, some <laughs> so, words are contextual, you know. You could say, I prick my right finger. Back. Don't Sorry, finger Paul. your prick. No, no, no. No, you know, I, I would like to say I'm flattered, Johnny, but I'm not, man. I'm really <laughs> no, not. I'm afraid, actually. <laughs> I, uh, luckily, luckily, I framed the shot this way. So you're, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not even an option. Um, yeah. Let me, uh, I'll see if I can. Uh, We're back in 20. Point. Thank you. And, uh, Trump's big thing was like, he's yelling. This guy's a psycho. And, and he's writing it in all caps. It was my thing. Like, <laughs> so good. It's just, a, a, you know. And I would like to bring up the fact that they, he walked them into. You're locked into the Hal Sparks radio program. Mega Worldwide. Welcome back to House Parks Mega Worldwide. Please like and subscribe at infotainmentwars.com. That's our YouTube channel or twitch.tv slash House Parks where you become a member. Membership shared, our uh, memberships earned. And uh, if you can't support the show financially in any way through Patreon and any of those other things, all I ask is that you uh, subscribe. It's free. And uh, share the show in the clips and that kind of stuff. Anything you can do to help us expand our reach uh, that doesn't uh, interfere, you know, doesn't take your time or your money away. Feel free. And also, uh, a big thank you to everybody who supports the show and our patrons. You guys make the show possible. And tickets for Sexy Liberal uh, Tour, the Tex Sexy Liberal Tour, went on sale on Friday. We're coming to your town or a town near you or a town within a three-hour drive maximum, I hope. Um, and we're adding dates. Uh, those will be soon. Those are uh, those are available now at sexyliberal.com. I um, the Chicago date on your image. Um, that's because that was the Live Nation uh, dates oh, that they I picked see. us so up. Not sold through the same thing. Yeah, exactly. So that that's gotcha. uh, we're at the Vic in August, and Johnny Million will be there. And by God, I'm going to have Johnny Million play a solo on oh uh, on uh, Florida Man. I think that'd be a great <laughs> surprise. You have to wait backstage. And then I'm just going to play Florida Man. And then I'll just do the acoustic part. We'll practice it a couple of times. And then you just come out and just rip a solo with me doing acoustic underneath. <laughs> I go. just think, come on. A nice Neil on. Young solo. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, as shaky as his voice. Southern man, you're a... So, um, <clears throat> we... We have to. Talk I got to tell you, that was a blast the other night, Hal. We've got to oh. start doing some some meetups and stuff like that. You know, we just tell everybody, Love look, it. no politics. Come have a good time. Mm. Let's just hang out. Yes, uh, that was a blast. That was yeah. an absolute blast. So I text I got to tell you, I had no. I knew you could sing, man. 
Uh -huh. But I did not know. I mean, I could not believe how tight you guys were. Oh, I could not thanks. believe how. I mean, damn. I yeah. mean, damn. Nerd, that nerd that nerd was a Halen. good show, brother. Yeah, he came and saw Nerd Halen in Texas uh, at the at the at the Glass Cactus, which I lovingly refer to as the Ask Galactus. Um, uh, when <laughs> we were there, um, but, and uh, it was just it was so nice to you know have Texas Ball in the audience there and 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 our sparklers that show up. And it's just lovely. It's just so great. So I agree. The next time we play there, and it won't be too long because they have us back on the regular, and it's a it's a joy to play there. Um, the next time we're there, we'll have a uh, like a, a Hal Sparks uh, Texas Paul meet meet and greet after the show Ooh. or before for everybody who's in that arena. And and similarly, if I can, or, you know, when Sexy Liberal comes to Boston, I'm gonna I'm gonna drag Boston Brian to a coffee shop in the afternoon. At, before uh -huh. or after sound check and make everybody gather there and say hi to him and that kind of stuff and then one day probably around the inauguration we're all going to converge on dc when biden wins and is and, and takes the oath again and we'll all be there uh together doing a you know a, a live simulcast or something well i'm gonna I wanna that was a great that time out. though man there were there yeah. were ran into some midas mighty there ran into all kinds of people there i mean it was just it was a blast we need to do yeah. i mean we need to do that a lot i agree we do yep just and get out and way, have some fun i mean we have hit uh 66.6 .6 thousand uh subscriptions uh on on youtube we've got uh six 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 subscribers and uh, I'm almost a, at a thousand. Oh, that's very that, well. That's I'm the very those close. Are your markers. We're uh, the 66.6 .6 has always been a big one, obviously, because we're all trying to. I'm trying to raise enough money to buy 666 Fifth Avenue so that uh, I, you know, and and everybody's like, you'll never be able to do that. You don't have enough money. Neither did Jared Kushner. So there. Um, oh. And but all we need is 666,000 subscribers uh, to do it. So uh, keep at it, like and subscribe. And uh, at some point, we will take over. I want you to know this. I want you to know this. All right. So, um, so yes. So uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the the dark branding of um, of the rest of the year. And I think the the administration afterwards they did a full court press. They sent out uh, Mayor Pete, Jennifer Granholm, and uh, the the VP and uh, uh, Mister Mister Second VP. Um, and, uh, all the surrogates started making the rounds to talk about these infrastructure projects, not the least of which Texas Paul is the Dallas Fort Worth DFW. Good Lord. So for those that don't know, DFW is the LaGuardia of Texas and LaGuardia has gotten a lot better. You can't even make jokes about, uh, you know, that in, in, uh, um, in New York anymore that, you know, all the JFK flyers used to make, um, jokes about it. But I, but the design is very similar at DFW, and when I went there, you know, it's been, it's always rough. It's such, it's, it's a, it's a creaky, smelly old place. And but there was a bunch of pardon our dust walls going up, mm. and a bunch of improvements. All of it infrastructure bill, all of it from that stuff. And that hotel needs it, man. I, I, I mean, pardon me, that airport needs it. I mean, yeah. it's just. Ooh, I mean, yeah. I, I hate flying out of DFW. And if, you, yeah. if you're in Texas, you, you just have to. I mean, right. you can fly out of Houston with a few airlines, but but no, mm -hmm. man, DFW blows. Yeah. Well, and that was the thing is that it it's getting money. And I think this was the key thing about the infrastructure bill. Like the bet, I think there's a lot of great moments and there were a lot of great lines. But I think the best part was if any of you don't want that federal money, you just let me know, <laughs> right? When, when yeah, Biden that said great. that to all them, I was like, that is key to his reelection, you know, is now, because there's going to be a bunch of ribbon cuttings between now and November. There, like, there's going to be a lot of projects that are not just starting, but finishing between now and then. And he's going to be there in red state and blue and purple. Let's remember, like, the big one is, like, going to those purple states, making sure you've got a regular presence there going, see this thing you didn't have before? Now you do. See this old thing that's gone and the new thing that's replacing it that's way better that you've been asking for for years and there's no reason why Trump couldn't have done it and he just didn't? Uh, you're welcome. And I, th I think that's the primary way um, that they get 
you know, they get people like back on, on, uh, you know, on track. Yeah. I'm seeing a, are you, you guys lose my mic? Do you not hear me? No, I can hear you. No, okay. I can hear you great. Okay. Uh, there's great. some uh, audio issues on YouTube, apparently. Is that true on Twitch and everywhere else? Uh, Chicago's fine, so I think we're all right. Um, um, very cu curious. Hmm. Uh, we'll figure that out in a minute. Okay, all's well with some. Okay, so it's only it's localized. Sorry. Um, but that's you know that I think is crucial. The the your tax dollars at work part, where people are actually seeing the material change. And again, rural broadband. I want it just so Texas Paul has great internet out in the sticks yeah. yeah i'm telling you man it's a mess out here and i i i can't tell you enough how how screwed a quarter of the country gets on their on their internet access i mean right. just just out of if you don't mind me asking what do you guys pay for internet access high speed internet access well i have i mean in uh, i have two different sites here in la and the baseline is 120 a month and and biz for and business fiber optic you know it's you know here it's close to 300 for the bandwidth that and that's business. That, that's a business rate yeah yeah it, it's 150 to 250 bucks a month for home not Whoa. business home internet for most rural most folks out in the sticks like me and it's right. and it blows man yeah, it is terrible. horrible it's unreliable. It's horrible. And I, I tell you, they've got to really, I, I appreciate the investments mm -hmm. that they're making, but they really have to, to, to tout it. You know, these Republicans, well, these the Republicans irony. will not regulate anything. Right. They the will irony not. is so, they're so the find money trickles it. down to the states, but it gets pissed away because of Republicans. Right. Well, and they're going to, I think one of the irony is, is that these folks are finally going to, you know, realize via the internet they have. You know what I mean? Like, they're not going to get this from Fox News or Newsmax or any of these sites, but they are going to read about it or see it in a, on a news source or somebody talking about it or just notice that they can binge watch shows or whatever they do in their free time or watch a football game without having to watch the, the loading screen go round and round um, again and again. And that's the key. Because, uh, again, if the, there are three things I think the president can primarily do one is security and sometimes it's out of your hands like 9-11 or oklahoma city and those things happen and it's a and we learn about what a president you are by your response then the uh, but the primary thing is if you can not have a, a major incident on your watch right that's that's key the the other one is it you know is quality of life you know, really letting people experience. And that's why the Republicans are running with his inflation ideas because they think it, it's their quality of life argument. But it ain't. And the and while prices may come down and will come down on a bunch of things because the uh, the cost of making them, producing them, or or supplying them is going down, the the their wages are going up and will stay that way. And that's going to be, the, that's the quality of life thing that has some legs. There's fluctuation in oil prices. There's fluctuation in inflation that will come and go in emergencies like we had with uh, COVID. But in this particular instance, you know, uh, the wages part is something nobody's going to take back your raise in that regard. Um, now, we have to watch for layoffs and all that other stuff, but that's why unions are important. Um, we're at the bottom of the hour, and I want to thank Texas Paul. Please check out realtexaspaul.com. Go to his site, uh, subscribe, and, and watch his live stream. And thank you so much for being on with us today, brother. I appreciate it. It's always good to talk to you. Thank you, Paul. And, and, and I and I hope you enjoy your enjoy. It. Good I, to see you. Good to see you guys. I made for him. Appreciate you. <laughs> Thanks. We'll be back right after this with Philip Bittner and uh, more Johnny Million. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Paul. We'll, uh, we'll uh, see you. Pleasure right. to be here, man. Good. Absolutely. Good to see you again, Johnny. Good to yeah. see you again, Phil. You we'll take care, you. brother. I think he can hear you in the background. Okay, there he goes. All right, there we go. Let me drop that. Out. I can't click away and fix the, the scene because if I do, I think that's what makes it die. Die. But, um, Phil, I uh, don't hear you. I don't know if that's on purpose yet. Test. I don't hear you. Um, do you hear him, Johnny? No, not yet. 
Okay. Sometimes we have that issue where it's like, um, you know, one of us can't hear him, but the other one can or whatever. I think I've solved that part of it. So, but I don't see a, I, I have that little, that should there, do it. there he that is. Should do it. Yeah. That there he goes. Hey, Phil. Mm -hmm. Yep. Lovely. And we'll go to. Let's see if I can put a light on me here. Quit it. Paste. There we go. Get that in there. And yeah, this guy's his uh, snazzy new. Oh, thank you for the super chat. So naughty. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, today's a great day for 666 super chats. I'm just saying, since we finally hit 66.6 thousand subscribers. Uh, either uh, an ambulance just went by uh, behind Phil, or, or, yeah, yeah, or he's playing. He's playing a Clouseau movie in the background, very loud. <laughs> I think I need to get a new light. Oh, well. It's all right. We got you. You're good. Okay, let me see. Let me see this. Let me get rid of this over here. And good. Yeah, cool. There. And I can oh. get Phil's. Hey, there he is. Up. That's better. Yeah. And then we'll get a. Yeah, I, I couldn't figure out what was killing all my uh, stuff, and it was the um, studio mode freaks everything out. People right in now. the chat think I need a little uh, icon, too. There's... Yes, you do. I was going to make a guitar one, but I wanted a picture from you to do it. So I agree. Yeah. I, I had an idea for one, but I didn't know if you had a logo for the show that you like using. Oh, really? Yeah, so we have to make one. I know. I didn't want to pre be presumptive, um, you know, in that regard, you know, with you because it's... I've got the big Johnny Million logo that's on my t-shirts and stuff. Okay. Send it to me. Text it to me. You have merch now, Johnny? Okay. Yeah, of course she does. Oh, I got merch, my man. Oh, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, and I, and I wear it on the show man. because I have no pride. That's right. I have no <laughs> shame yeah. whatsoever. Or no shame. No shame. Yes. Right, right. Um, I got to get me some merch. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Um, hold on. I'm going to open this guy up. Translate to English because that's always an issue. Um, so much to talk about. I don't even know, yeah. know where to start. Um. Um, well, obviously, well, the so too, we could do the direct response. Yeah, we could do the, so too. We could absolutely yeah, the, do so too. I'm sure they're talking about this, uh, you know, a lot yeah. over there and yeah. Biden going, Some more others, will not but bow yeah. down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that he opened the speech, the first thing yeah. he did was Ukraine. Yeah. Um, that I, I, I've seen a lot of people talking about that, but then I've also seen a lot of people who are just, I mean, they don't even. They're, they weren't even aware that we're back in 10 happening. seconds. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Chicago. Thank you. Thanks. Just living their lives. Right. As you do. As you do. You're listening to the Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide. I've had people walk out of me before, but not when I was being so charming. Video streaming at housefarms.com. Well, I don't care for you or for the putrid sludge you're trowling out. Damn, plus face, little pimp stick. True progressive talk. Might be a good time for you guys to give up. Uh, I want to welcome to the show, uh, and thanks to Texas Paul for coming on with us. I want to welcome to the show uh, Philip Bittner, who's live in Kiev with us right now. Johnny Million is also uh, with us and is going to be farming questions from our chat at infotainmentwars.com and at twitch.tv yeah. slash Al Sparks. Um, so if you have questions for Phil, please let him know. And uh, he'll he'll pass those along during our Q and A part, portion. I I do want to say uh, first of all, just ask you how you are, and and also your response to the the SOTU and how people are receiving it over there. Well, I mean, first and foremost, I think it was a fantastic speech, just full stop. And and also, as somebody who's uh, mm -hmm. both my parents passed uh, as a result of dementia. Mm -hmm. um, that this argument that he that that 
the president that president biden has some form of dementia mm -hmm. um people who have dementia and i'm speaking from personal experience here they're not conscious of the situation in the room they're oftentimes lost in their own mind because they are so right. concerned that they're losing their mind so they're not reactive to their environment the fact that he was able to um ad lib and to respond to you know cat calls and all the kind mm -hmm. of the the peanut gallery as it were just indicates to me that it you know deftly he does not have yeah he does not have dementia i have no. my mother and my father both had dementia that's not what dementia looks like anyhow but that's not my area of expertise i'm no neither a doctor uh mm -hmm. nor you know uh able to really comment on that except for my personal experience what is important i thought in my from my perspective and and, and my area of expertise is that he opened the speech talking about ukraine yep and he opened any and he you know criticized Trump's, uh, you know, I'll let them do whatever they want, you know, uh, yeah. statement about about Putin. If, if, you know, if NATO doesn't pony up the bill and, you know, I mean, all that disgusting, disgusting stuff. But the fact that he opened the speech by saying and getting Ukraine right out there from the from the get go, uh, yeah. I thought was was great. And I know that there have been Ukrainians, especially Ukrainians who are involved in in relations international relations with uh the west and in particular with the united states that was a huge boost mm -hmm. in, you know in the arm that was a huge shot in the arm for them um the fact that the man who is obstructing putting the bill on the floor uh was sitting behind him uh you know it wasn't lost on a lot of people either yep uh but then there are also people who, you know, I'll be perfectly honest with you. The, the you know, the guy who sells me my uh, uh, craft beer, the the little craft beer place down around the corner for me in my market. I told, I asked him, you know, what did you think about the speech? And he did, had no idea what I was talking about. So, sure, you sure. know, look, it, you know, this is something we haven't talked about that very much, Hal, you and I, and, and it's something maybe we should talk about is the fact that, you know, despite all the fact that there's all this kind of politics and geopolitics and uh, you know oh or is is ukraine filled with nazis or what is what what's the you know what is the involvement of your average ukrainian in the war there's still a vast majority you know well not a majority but there's a vast population here that's just living their lives you right. know as sure. oh, as difficult as it is under war conditions and they're you know there is a vastly widespread uh majority who are you know pro Ukraine sovereignty, anti-Russian invader, but that's as far as it goes, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and and that's why that's why when I hear that narrative of like, oh, there are Nazis everywhere in Ukraine. Well, the the, the guy who sells me my craft beer doesn't care about politics. Mm -hmm. the, the the girl, oh, bloody hell, uh, the, the the lady who sells me my pickles. You know, she's mm -hmm. not. You know, <laughs> she, I know she's what you mean. Yeah, she doesn't really. Hey, easy now. Um, you know, it's people are living their lives as best they can. So let's not get that mixed up. Having said all that, again, it was a great speech. It was very, it was very heartening for those who are paying close attention to what's happening in the United States, and that's a large population of the of Ukraine because they know that it's, you know, going to make or break, in many ways, what what happens here. So, you know. Uh, there also uh, have been sentiments of like, well, those are all very nice words, but we need help here now because people are dying every day. So sure. it's a, it's, you know, it's a lot of mixed emotions. Uh, they're mm -hmm. happy to see president Biden, you know, start with, with the most important thing uh, that is in their lives. And that's mm -hmm. USA for Ukraine. Um, but uh, there's, there's a whole, there's a whole other tapestry of people. What's who, what struck me is, as, do it differently. Yeah, what struck me as crucial to the argument is that if you listen to uh, Trump or or even you know the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world, they're like the, they're pro pushing the world towards World War Three, and uh, we're going to end up with American boots in the ground, and you just you know Russia's a nuclear power, and you don't mess around with that, and so we have to make peace and the like. The irony is is that as America has drawn back and has not been you know supporting directly supporting Ukraine the way we could. With, with very little effort, by the way, um, France and now Poland 
have both started talking about what what would be necessary if they had to actually be part of a ground force, a NATO-based ground force in Ukraine. That that conversation started because America, it, you know, is being held back by Mike Johnson, not, you know, not in spite of it, that it directly led to it. Like, okay, if the Americans aren't here to back this up, it's going to take all of us actually fighting there, which does expand the war into Europe, mm-hmm. does make it, you know, a, a, a effectively, a, you know, Russia's proxy war against Europe and, and m- makes it sound a lot more like early World War II, you know, pre-World War II actions than, than it did previously. Be, again, stuff that would not be on the table if we were able to support them the way the vast majority of Americans want to. Absolutely. And I mean, I, it also falls in line with what uh, General Milley said when he was when he was exiting his position, which right. he was which was to say the consequences of us not supporting Ukraine will mean, you know, should Ukraine lose this war, all of our military spending is going to go through the roof. Mm-hmm. There will be there will be troops positioned on the Polish Ukrainian border because that's where the Russians will be, presumably. Um, you know, if that's the way it shakes out, but it will also mean massive, more expensive. We'll go into another cold war. We are going to, mm-hmm. you know, that, that Millie was absolutely hundred percent. We can't just look at this conflict a- yeah. and hope that it goes away. Just stick our heads in the sand and, and go, well, just make peace, make peace, make peace, make peace. Right. If, 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 if there is a bad peace here, and, and somebody asked me, what does a bad piece mean? A bad piece means that it's only a placeholder until the Russians go for their next little salon. Yeah, it means surrendering a staging Europe. area for the next attack, which is exactly what yeah. Israel is dealing with with Hamas, for example. Um, and and uh, you know, th- you know, the the president announced it at the SOTU in terms of the the Israel Hamas thing that we're doing this like floating pier to get two million meals a day into Gaza, um, you know, and, and the construction on this thing is amazing. Like if you, if you've seen pictures of it, like it is, you know, again, much closer to the kind of activity you saw, you know, pre-World War II in terms of America trying to get aid to allies or supporting, you know, civilians or evacuations before we were involved in actual fighting with the idea being is that we don't have to be, but you know, and and especially we're going to start off by being part of the of the solution, um, you know. And if they want to make a new problem with us, that'll be a thing down the road. Um, the same thing. Yeah, is true I'm, with I'm gapping on. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm gapping on the name of the of the of the peers that they had off of the coast of Normandy for the D-Day invasion, um, but they're still there. Mm-hmm. You know these 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 prefabricated uh, uh, you know wharfs that we made. Uh, for the second one, and that's you know 1940s technology. So anyhow, that's that's yeah, I found that encouraging in the in the speech as well. But right, um, you know, it 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 there has to you have to look past the next step. You have to be looking two or three steps down the road when it comes to armed conflict like this, because if we if we abandon Ukraine because it troubles us that that Russia is a, a nuclear power or I mean, the argument that we can't be spending the money is ridiculous because this is a drop in the bucket. Right. But um, uh, we we can't just hope that uh, by kind of like forcing them to sit down uh, across the table from other, one another, the Ukrainians and the Russians, uh, that that we can force a peace on this place. It's we're not there yet. We're not anywhere near that right now. Um, right. Y- Ukraine is not going to abandon uh, millions of Ukrainians who are now currently living under Russian occupation. So we're not we're not at that point. And I think the president's tone was 100 percent right in saying we're not going to bow to Putin. Um, you know, it, it's it, Putin is a bully. Let's just get that. A hundred percent right. Okay. The man is a bully. The man is a thug and a bully. I have seen his works for 25 years. I have seen his works and he is a bully. And if you don't stand up to him, he will just keep taking and taking and taking. So 
it was the exact right tone uh, that the president took during the SOTU. And um, I think Ukrainians appreciated it. But, uh, but, but again, you know, we need to we need to get some we need to get some hardware flow in here quick. Agreed. Agreed. Um, um, and there's there but, is stuff coming in again. There, there's yeah, a lot of bank there is. bank bank shots. The administration is sending in um this this and the may... europeans are kind of making their movement as well i mean the mm-hmm. the i think it's the czechs who who just uh have made have have found a way that they can they can secure funding that they can then seek uh weaponry outside of nato and outside of the eu which is which was a prior restriction that they had they're they've, they've gotten now a, approval to you know take bids from india or from other you know uh places around the world where they can get ammunition. That's the most important thing that needs to come here. Mm-hmm. Um, the, you know, the, the, we will make it here in Ukraine until the Congress can get its act together, right. uh, which I think will definitely happen. But it, it, we will get to the point we can hold off here in Ukraine until that happens. But the sad thing is that every while we can do it, um, it is sad to see that we have to do it and that every day Ukrainians are dying. I mean, what happened in Odessa just recently was absolutely tragic and totally preventable had we had uh, air defense systems that were functioning properly. Uh, you know, seven kids are, are, are dead, children you know, right. in an apartment building. And um, that's and, and that happened. You know, and that's and every day. the Ukrainians Republican response to the SOTU about the woman who was killed by a migrant um, which is a, a tragic story. Um, of course it is. But not, you know, as are all the murders that happened in Alabama, one would it think that she seemed to... It is all they care about. When I go yeah. to the gym, that is all that's on Fox and Friends. Yep, yeah. They're just running with of that. Course. Like the like this one particular woman, say her name, say her name, and, and the like. Meanwhile... And then they say it. that he mispronounced it. Oh, yeah, because he said Lincoln Riley or instead of Lincoln Riley. Oh. Uh, like, yeah. it's not... It, the the point is is that the in the Soju response they didn't even mention the name of the woman that in the story that she told over and over and over that apparently she tells all the time who was you know trafficked by the cartels and horribly abused uh, you know the the poor immigrant woman that Donald Trump would deport immediately upon taking office um, they they didn't even mention her name so like it, that it, not that she would even know it um, when we come back I want to talk about a couple things namely. There's been a spike in bankruptcies in Russia, in Russian businesses, and it has a lot to do with the, the, the death of the ruble and the amount of Chinese debt the Russians are now taking on. The biggest holder of Chinese debt is now are Russians, and they have to do it in yuan, which is nuts. It's like investing in, in uh, like yogurt cards, where after the 10th one, you get a, an 11th one free. That, I'm that's, listening. Right. Now I've got Johnny's attention. We'll be back right after this. Oh, and also Solovyev talking about, like, it, what's the ideal weather to nuke Europe? Hey, Jesus yeah. Christ. Good old Solovyev. You subscribe since I sent my little link. You what? I've got four new YouTube subscribers since I sent my link in the chat. Nice. <laughs> That's how you do it. It helps people. Yes, yeah, stacking bricks. That's what you got to do. I'm at 981. Hmm? All right. Hmm. Getting close. I'm a subscriber. So. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. You should um, scare everybody and join the chat sometime during the live stream. Okay. I can do that. I should. I think I should just, uh, like walk by in a back bathroom 15. behind you and i'm in chicago like, when <laughs> nobody knows i'm there just kind of like oh you need you need to send me a video of you like walking around and i'll just play it behind and then act like i don't know what's going on when people are like is that hell behind you? Right. attention attention stop what you're doing because we're coming back to the Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide. Oh my God! They went a little crazy with it, and I appreciate it. Now let's get back with Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide. So uh, a couple of stories. Um, and, and like I said, right before we went in 
uh, to break, I wanted to talk about the fact that there's been this amazing spike, and I'll, I'll find the story and bring it up, but in, um, in Russian bankruptcies, business bankruptcies inside Russia um, have hit an all-time high, largely, yeah, Russia, this is, a, this is a, a Newsweek story, but it's from an AP source, Russia hit by tsunami of bankruptcies. You've seen a sharp spike in corporate bankruptcies, according to a report that uh, comes as Vladimir Putin looks to tax companies more to pay for uh, his social program and sanction hit economy, continues to face turbulence. The business uh, newspaper Commerçant re- reported that in the first two months of 2024, corporate bankruptcies had increased by more than a half compared with the same period last year. And experts predicted an increase in insolvencies in the future, largely because these and, and, and the ones that are kept afloat are borrowing yuan as a source of money and and like it's bad when you're borrowing yuan inside china right now it's a terrible time to be borrowing money in china right now it's even a worse time to be borrowing yuan outside of china you know because it is becoming you know the the kind of like members only points it's like airline miles that expire um as a currency and and you know right after uh, you know, I would argue uh, always, but at a, right before, I think, the, the the attack on Ukraine, Putin had this idea that eventually Russia would be the alt currency. It would be the, you know, that there'd be the U.S. and the euro would kind of compete against the ruble as the, you know, as the petro ruble, that idea. And that he was going to, you know, push things in that direction. Meanwhile, because of this attack, they've been swamped by the yuan and the ruble is... It, you know, has ceased to become a world traded uh, currency. Just not, nobody needs it. You're not no. nobody's would, buying and selling want, stuff. Who would, yeah, yeah. Who would want to buy the ruble right now? It's to ridiculous. buy what? What does it get you other than yeah. oil? And India and Turkey have just suspended their Russian That's oil right. sales. Yeah. Yes, they have. Yeah. Yeah, they have. It's a ticking. It's a it's a ticking time bomb for Putin. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he he has tr- transitioned his economy to be a war economy so the the military industrial complex Mm -hmm. uh is is doing quite well but but yeah if you're not involved in you know making shells or tanks or what have you Mm -hmm. you're in trouble i mean he recently went to an agribusiness place where they were showing off uh ai uh tomato picking machines and like right he was he was regaling, you know, Russian media about how wonderful that was, but mm-hmm. it's it was all for show, right? It's all for show. If if you're not involved in uh, essential war making industry, then you're economically in trouble if you're in Russia, and it's going to get worse, right? Um, yeah, Turkish oil terminal on the Mediterranean will stop importing Russian oil amid intensified U.S. sanctions pressure on Moscow's yeah. exports. The terminal operator told. Uh, Reuters on Tuesday, India is doing the exact same thing. Um, you know, the these they have one client now, China. All, all you know, whatever, somewhere in the order of like eighty percent of Russian oil is going to China, and yeah. uh, and a lot of it has to be sent via tanker through the Black Sea and around. It takes forever. If anything happens to it, it's you know. And there is no love lost between the Chinese and the Russians. People don't re- people don't realize this, but there's a a really re- centuries old mm-hmm. hostility between Moscow and 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 right. China. Uh, you know they they really don't trust the Chinese any more than they throw them underhand because they were occupied by well the Mongol mm-hmm. horde. But I mean mm-hmm. they have this vision of China as a as a potential. Well, that is a potential, but as an adversary. So, and they're right. Know, it, I mean, it's still happening. That's the other this thing. This is too, not is going down well. This, yeah, you know, no, the Russians don't like this. For all the talk about sort of American industrial imperialism, where we like roll in, get locals on their back foot, and then take over their markets, and our companies swoop in and take their natural resources and stuff, which is you know, we fight against in the United States. It's wrong when it happens. It's been, I think, mm-hmm. largely exaggerated in a lot of fronts by China and Russia. When they talk about it, almost anywhere you hear them talking about it, at, you know, that's what occurs. It's not a good deal for the locals, that kind of stuff. It's never a, a, equitable in any way, even if the, 
the American companies provide 80% of the extraction of a, of something, you know, the 20% that, you know, the, the 60% that locals get versus the 40% profit that comes out to the companies after they've paid everybody who does it and all this stuff is too much. And they fight, they, you know, they, they try to paint it as, uh, as American corporate imperialism as a story and for a while. Russia and China just do it overtly. And the interesting thing yeah. is, like, right now, they're doing it to each other. There's this weird, like, China's more successful at doing it with Russia because Russia is busy trying to murder everyone in Ukraine. But if they weren't, or, or when this is over and they lose and go back to the 91 borders, Russia's and China's relationship will be a, a sort of permanent leg wrestle for dominance. Yes. And and Russian public opinion is not supportive of that. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot, as I say, there's a lot of animosity towards the Chinese right. and towards China by your average Russia. I mean, there's also mm -hmm. the racism that is that is widespread in in, right. in Russia towards uh, you know people of Asian descent uh, as, as well. I mean, it, that's a whole thing to unwrap. But but sure. there's the, it is not going to be. I know already it isn't, and it's going to worsen the more that Russia is dependent on China, and that that is where they're they're be Russia is increasingly becoming a client state of China, mm -hmm. and the Russian popul the Russian people, many of whom you know are very you know well educated, many of whom get around information through VPN. Yes, right. many of them fled during the war, but there are still plenty of people inside Russia. Who have this animosity towards uh, towards China, and as they become increasingly beholden to Beijing, it's going to get it's it's going to get. Look, it's getting worse internally within. I don't know if you saw this. It's getting worse internally within in the Russia. I mean, even right now this weekend, the, there are several Western embassies that are warning their people who are still in Russia not to attend public uh, uh, assemblies, right or events. Because there is a fear of a terrorist attack, and and this is this an is internal one, uh, yeah, yeah, it's an internal terrorist attack within Russia somewhere, and of course this has sparked all sorts of diplomatic uh, arguments and and uh, you know conspiracy theories and all the rest of it, but it turns out as you look at it that there is a there is potentially an internal terrorist threat uh, within Russia by some of their separatist movement, no, notably in the Caucasus. Yeah. And the strain on Russia as a federation and their social um, dividing lines that exist mm -hmm. within uh, a multicultural Russia, which has always been dominated by Moscovites, mm -hmm. um, it, that strain is going to get worse and worse. And all of this is combined. The economy, the reliance on, on China becoming a, a Chinese client state, having these, uh, these, these populations that have been uh, suppressed for so long. Domestically, I think within Russia, we can expect things to worsen. Uh, at, at what speed? I can't say. How right. bad it's going to get? I don't know. But it's not its not smooth sailing for Putin. And everybody who says, oh, look, the ruble is still standing up or the economy is still doing well, it's its, it's a house of cards. And right. it's well, going to it, get I, really weird in Russia. I have mentioned, soon, I I've mentioned, and we, and we got to take a, another break in a minute, but I mentioned, you know, the, the ongoing fighting in Sudan and the, uh, the ethnic cleansing and the genocide that's happening in parts of Sudan and in Darfur specifically, the RSF is supported by Russia. And, uh, it, and at this point they're, they're running out of munitions largely because their supporter is, uh, is not helpful, I guess, currently right now, they're not getting what they need to, to keep this going. So they're, they're calling for a ceasefire during Ramadan, uh, presumably, only amongst them and the Sudanese government. Of course, they can continue to kill, you know, Christians and Yazidis and, and you know, non-Muslim non or non-Arab uh, Darfur and Sudanese people during that period. It's so psycho. But one of the, you know, the primary aspects of this is that the ruble is kept afloat largely by the gold that they are sneaking out of Sudan during this fighting, that the Wagner guys down there are leaving with truckloads of gold. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyways, we, uh, we're we going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. It's the House Parks Radio program, Mega Worldwide, on WCPT Radio, Chicago's Progressive Talk. Boom. Mm -hmm. 
Bergman. Somebody did somebody in the chat get put in a timeout that uh, I didn't know about? Because apparently yeah, West gets put in a timeout every week. No, it was somebody else. I oh. I mean I yeah I, I like I'm not you know I I didn't do it so a lot of times there's an automated thing if you use a racial epithet or you use anti-gay language. Uh, Is that uh, why I can't comment on anything? Yeah, that's 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 what it's because of the character you play and his uh, awkward name. Um, <laughs> I'm not even going to say it. Um, uh, yeah. So, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, but apparently they thought I did it while I was busy doing a show. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very funny. They're very upset. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> um, let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was looking at the... Uh, like. The, yeah, I'm the glad RS I could throw that thing in. I'm glad I could throw that thing in there about the about the terrorist warning because mm -hmm. that's that's got a lot of people really twisted up right. about a, a potential terrorist attack inside Russia this weekend. Mm -hmm. Very weird stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like. Yeah, they're saying it like, might be Muslim. They're saying it might be Dagestanis or a section. Well, they'll lay it off on them. I have no doubt. You know what I mean? If they yeah. because yeah, yeah. admitting. That you have Ukrainian sympathizers doing it draws more attention to the fact that you've got instability in the country amongst people. If you can out off, if you can outsource it to non-white people or to Muslims again, I mean, isn't that how Putin came to power? Right? And it wasn't yeah, the yeah, and he alleged the bombing Chechnya was Chechens? Thing. Right. The the yeah, Chechen yeah, Muslims were the ones who supposedly blew up the apartment building that got him in office. That he blew mm -hmm. up himself, but yeah, there's so. also there is there is actually a legitimate uh, indigenous grassroots uh, oh, no violent uh, uh, movement in the caucuses, and always have it. It's their soft underbelly. They've, they've spoken mm -hmm. about it. You know, this is this is if you study Russia, even in, on a cursory level, you know that that there's a well, lot of. Uh, and no doubt, when there's you difficulty know, down there, when when there's blood in the water, the other sharks come. Like if you if you exactly, if it's it's exactly. It, it's a uh, coming it's back. When a hammer, That's, thank you. All right, it's when a hammerhead shark gets nicked by another shark in the middle of a feeding frenzy, yeah. it becomes food, and that's what I think yeah. Putin's the most afraid of. Rightfully yeah. so. Mm -hmm. I know I'm only on one day a week. I get it. I'm gonna have to jump on. Uh, garage band starts sawing something together. This is the house bar show, brought wow, and a guitar note, and then uh, it was progressive uh, and all. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Hey, how did you mean something like this? This is the house bar show, brought wow, and a guitar note, and then uh, it was progressive uh, and all. Yeah, it's gonna be good. The Hal Sparks Radio Program Mega Worldwide. Yeah, it's gonna be good. So the um the 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 train track side of the Kirch Bridge was closed for eight hours for uh, for unspecified reasons after the explosions that we heard about last week, and then uh, the car side, I I don't know even know if it ever reopened. The trains started moving again. That would be the most reinforced part of it. Obviously, the part with trains on it is going to be the stronger part of the bridge. That's how they build it because it's constant traffic of a much larger scale. Whereas you know passenger vehicles and trucks are you know are lighter, and therefore if you strike the bridge in total, the part that's going to crumble first is the passenger side. Um, and um, we heard last week that there were explosions. We didn't know. There were noises reported in Crimea, and then, voila, um, the, the, it was actually after the show last week. It was closed down for eight hours. The trains weren't passing. Mm -hmm. They went back to passing, but the, but the driving side of it um, uh, went down. It said it's reported that Crimea was supposedly attacked by missiles and drones at night, the Kursk Bridge supposedly being one of the targets um, that led to that. Um, and the, that it took them eight hours to get train traffic moving again um during that time i i just think and that was right after this talk about what missiles the germans would use to hit it and all that stuff it, you know mm -hmm. where the ukrainians were like yeah we don't even need that we've got our own stuff um and then you got russia this week you got solovyov on television talking about what's the best weather to nuke europe <laughs> now uh, again if anyone on American television flippantly talked about nuking cities, 
the way these guys do. And they are state media. This is, you know, mm-hmm. this isn't the, the, the butt knuckle of the internet, you know, that is RSB, RSBN or RAV or Newsmax or some rando Not late knuckle. night show they have where they want to be the next uh, gut felled only, you know, grotesquely unfunny um, as opposed to just plain old unfunny. They, you know, I just, I like, we would flip out. We, we, if it was, if it was sure, even those and rightfully folks. so, and and they are, that's like their version of Hannity on PBS, right? That's that's the that the level of of visibility, and it's and it's paid for by the government. It's supported by, yeah. you know, government edict, and and he's he's just and he's not joking about it. He's stating this angrily. That's the issue. You know, it's not it's not even flippant. Yeah, he's got his shtick. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is, I don't know how much of this is actually instructed to him by the Kremlin or what mm-hmm. have you, or whether or not it's the persona that he has kind of made for himself of this right. ugly, belligerent. But but certainly, I mean, that is, that is one of the major reasons why the West has been so timid in its reaction to this invasion is because they got nukes. And they right. know it. And they know it. So they they will occasionally remind us, uh, hey, we got nukes. And we can, you know, it, but the second, again, mm-hmm. the second they drop a single nuke anywhere in the world, whether it's on a Western capital or whether or not it's here in Ukraine, it's done. It's over. For right. them, it's it's a no fly zone. It is NATO troops, you know, inside Ukraine. It, if you nuke something, and we're looking at the deaths of hundreds, if not millions, of people, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, you're done. You're done. You don't recover. Yeah. It's the same thing as I'm. I I have been saying, or I said earlier in the program about thinking about not the next step, but the third and the second and the third step after that. So right. let's say let's say Sovoliev gets his wish and and they drop a bomb on London. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. They're right. done. They yeah. they are done. The day yeah, after the day after they drop and, the moment and that's they not, drop a and bomb it's not just Sovoliev. and it's not just like us that turns on them finally or they become aware of it. It's it's the it's the end of their relationship with China. <laughs> it's their permanent end of yeah. their relationship with India or any other buyers. Like it is the the end of uh, even their like African and South American cohorts, right? That's that's the other part of it. Now this week, um, by the way, uh, um, or I think it was like basically like a, yeah, a little bit right right after Navalny died in, in short order. Uh, Biden um, put five hundred extra sanctions, um, five hundred new mm-hmm. penalties mm-hmm. on Russia. And this this yep. is this is where that uh, Indian Turkey stuff is coming from. This is where this is why it's you know uh, why they are are changing the fact that you know they were they were tacitly taking oil on the down low and Turkey was you know hoping to avoid it because they had kind of a emergency dispensation. Okay, that's gone. And within a couple of weeks of that happening, Turkey and India stop buying uh, Russian oil, and Turkey stops letting them do transfers in their water, um, which is another big thing that they do where they get around the sanctions by switching it from ship to ship down near Turkey and then send it on another, you know, ship. The irony is, is that they can't send it past, you know, and around the, you know, back through, uh, I guess, the, 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 into the, into the Red Sea because the Houthis will blow it up. They've, we've had, uh, uh, Russian na- uh, ship with naphtha in it yes, we have. You know, sank. Uh, there was an oil tanker sank. Um, finally, it had been uh, the one with the three crew members that were murdered on it um, by uh, by the Houthis. That one sat idle, um, spilling oil into the water. The pre- the prime minister of Yemen, I think it was that they have a yeah they have a prime minister um, said is the worst environmental disaster for their beaches that they've ever had. Um, that's, that's a gift from the Houthis, which are direct, you know, using gear they got from the Russians to shoot Russian ships. Mm-hmm. Like just amazing. The, I mean, you only talk about blowback. 
Like, uh, there's yeah. a huge thing between, like, the Mujahideen in the 80s and Osama bin Laden and the length of time that boomerang hung in the sky before it came back. This is, like, nearly one-to-one. One. Those missiles have still got styrofoam around them when they're striking Russian ships. Yeah. It, it, yeah. But 500 new yeah. sanctions from from Biden towards uh, Russia. Um, uh, let's let's grab some questions because we, we're, we're getting near the sure. end of the show, and I want to make sure we get some. Johnny Million, yep, what have we got? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so right off the bat, I've got one from Treba. Please ask Philip, uh, being in Ukraine, what would it take for the big media to return to Ukraine to cover what's happening there? Oi. Uh, it would, yeah, it would have to be some sort of major change on the battlefield. Uh, I, I, you know, a breakthrough. A Russian, uh, you know, it, a breakthrough uh, or a a, U- a major Ukrainian route, something like that. Um, they might they might come back for that. But aside from that, like a political upheaval or um, some sort of social uh, issue internally within Ukraine, they're not going to come back for that. Um, they need they need. This is really cynical and sad to say, but it's true. They need something sexy. They need yeah. something that's going to catch people's eyes. Right. Uh, and it's You're describing depressing. yourself, Phil. <laughs> there you go. A lot of pressure. Um, we, one can hope. Uh, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's sad. It's really sad that that's the state of our, our of our our uh, right. the news business because it is a business uh, that they need a shiny object because if they don't have a shiny object the audience isn't going to tune in either. Right. So this is a symbiotic situation. Mm-hmm. Media, media is a, everybody always talks and, and criticizes the, the press and the news industry and the news business. And they're right to do so. I have criticisms of myself. Mm-hmm. But where people get really uncomfortable is when I tend to also talk about, well, you have a responsibility as a media consumer that you also have to, that there is a, there is a, as I say, a symbiotic relationship, and you have to you have to um, vote with your clicks, vote with your eyes. Uh, if you want a story covered, I mean, if you really want to, get in touch with your local paper or you know the New York Times editorial board. Or there are yeah. ways to do it, but the, the the idea of being a passive consumer of news, I think we have to start to look at an alternative way. Of train uh, of teaching, we teach our children how to read. Uh, we should also be teaching our children how to consume, uh, you know, news yeah. and information. And uh, it, it does take some doing and some responsibility on the audience's part as well. So, mm-hmm. uh, what will it take to, for them to come back here? You know, uh, wh- you know, consume more news about Ukraine. Uh, write to you know, write. Uh, send in it to the editorial board of of whatever right. newspaper you like or news outlet you like. Say, you know, why aren't you guys covering Ukraine more? Um, mm-hmm. Don't just be passive. Uh, be involved. Uh, demand more from your news organizations and and be smarter about the news that you uh, that you consume. Watch more of uh, Hal and Me. That you know that's mm-hmm. that's 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 that there's an outlet for you. Right. Uh, yeah. But but in all seriousness, no. In all seriousness, I mean like. CNN and CBS and NBC and Fox and all those guys, they will go where the audience is. So if the yep. audience wants to learn more about Ukraine, they'll come here. But it's a that's a steep hill to climb uh, because it does cost a lot to do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, right now, Gaza is is sucking mm-hmm. all the oxygen out of the room, and it's mm-hmm. it's partly by design, frankly, not to right. get conspiratorial, but the fact that Hamas was going to Moscow on the regular in the build up to October 7th, I don't right. think is. A and that he, and, oh. and that he had them, had the leaders come up there right afterwards to act like he was playing a part in the ceasefire negotiations to just as a bait and switch, which never happened by the way, like that, that what, what China or, you know, allegedly, and certainly what Russia allegedly were negotiating with Hamas for a ceasefire of any sort did not happen. And what the result ultimately was is that, when there was a broken ceasefire, it was broken by Hamas after they had met with with Russia again. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you can say that's a correlation, not causation, but it certainly isn't helping. Meanwhile, the United <laughs> States is the only country in the world building a floating pier to get two million meals a day to uh, Gazans while this goes on. And and I got news for you. Anybody who thinks this is going to be the election issue or a ma- even a major one, you know, by November uh, is is the same people who are saying at, are going to try and run on Af- us being in Afghanistan after we left years ago. So um, and the same party, by the way, that kept us there. We got to take a break. We come back. More questions for you from okay. our chat room and uh, Johnny Million. We'll be back right after this. Uh, go to infoteamatwars.com and subscribe. Here's um, a not Phil sort of question. Somebody wants um, somebody wants a bumper sticker, a uh, Mega Worldwide bumper sticker option, so they can oh share right. their allegiance with the world. Sure, that's great. Yeah, good idea. I'm I'm for it. Yeah, um, I can make that happen. Yeah, yeah. Now I got to get now. Now there's a creative uh, rabbit hole to go down. Uh, you know. Um, because do you do this like, uh, the, when I did text to my logo, you, uh, oh, good. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. I get this in here. Hold on. Let's see if I can. It was delivered quietly. Hmm. The way I like it. Um, bloom. oh yeah, there we go. I feel like that, uh, will be difficult to fit into a little spot, but I think it can yeah, also big. just just be your logo anyways <clears throat> like just use it oh yeah yeah you know um like let's see that would be your face try to think if there's anything we've forgotten to talk about I'm sure there is mm-hmm. Hmm? no doubt Hold on. no this doubt use this as a way to, um, or I think, um, <clears throat> I mean, obviously or Orban meeting with Trump and his whole thing. Ah, that's, that's something worth a topic of, mm-hmm. of worth discussion. I mean, yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. yeah. Gotta love a little dictator, dictator to dictator love. Mm-hmm. Just shocking. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay. So <laughs> this is pathetic. Giant, just yeah. pathetic. Um, this I'm gonna go to Putin on Women's Day. <laughs> That's oh, just Lord. so pathetic, so pathetic, so performative. Mm-hmm. Back in twenty, he's such Thank he's you. such a Thank misogynist you. as well. For him to be handing out those flowers is just such a misogynist. Well, I you know. I have a yeah. Work. We'll talk about that. So let's let's talk. And we've got questions, obviously, from the chat. I don't want sure. to step on those too much, but whoa, that is a. Big I thing. am happy. You are happy. Let us be happy together. Whether the weather is cloudy or sunny, I will always be your funny honey bunny. I am lucky. You are lucky. Let us get lucky together. Whether the weather is cloudy or breezy, I'll be there to say hey come on let's take it easy because isn't it nice to have the friends that you do and isn't it nice that the sky is so blue and isn't it nice to say i love you chugga chugga choo choo woo woo i am smiling you are smiling let us smile together whether the weather is cloudy or stormy i will still be there in the morning i'll be right by your side in the morning i'll make you breakfast in the morning i hope that you like cereal Yay! <laughs> Hooray! Oh, I kind of, I kind of mentioned this at the beginning of the show, but I, I just want to point out something. And, and again, I hate uh, when good news makes people, some people upset, even if they deserve it. It should just be good news on its own. But uh, Elizabeth Francis is the world's uh, oldest person. She's 114. I, I, I apologize to her for making her two years older than she actually is. You never do that to a lady. That's just wrong. Um, she's 114. Mm-hmm. She's the oldest living person in the U.S. Um, uh, she is the fifth oldest uh, super centenarian in the world. Uh, um, and uh, she grew up in Louisiana. She, uh, she, she's African-American. 
Uh, her granddaughter, Ethel Harris, who's also her primary caregiver, says she offered valuable life advice. She said, treat people like you want to be treated. There um, you go. The old yeah. golden you rule. Go. I, you know, and, and I, you know, the first time I heard that was from a, uh, yeah, I think it was from a BDSM performer, um, which uh, <laughs> I got to say was Consent is key. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> okay. I was like, well. Uh, I'm sorry my hug was so gentle. I couldn't apologize enough. So uh, anyways, uh, so her birthday is, uh, she turned 114 last July. She'll be 115 this year, God willing, um, that she makes it there. And she'll uh, keep moving up that list. And um, yeah, um, she, she did have to start using a wheelchair when she was 108, which I got to oh. say, if you, if you hit 108, please yeah. have a seat. You're, you know, we'll get it. I'll go get it. You just you wait right there. I'll go get. I'll go to the kitchen. <laughs> you, it's fine. Hundred, yeah. So uh, she'll be 115 in July, and she's the oldest living Texan. She got a plaque for uh, given to her that said that was shaped like Texas, which is so wonderful. That uh, of course the, the, the oldest living uh, Texan is a black lady who was born in Louisiana. So uh, which is good you know, old Texas upsetting those master races. Well, I, guess, I, I guess my my happy ending would be and it's a day late but uh celebrating uh international women's day which in this part of the world is an enormous it's a it's a it's a big day on the calendar right. because obviously the soviets tried to destroy anything that had to do with religion so a valentine's day or a saint valentine's day was was not was was not a good thing so mm -hmm. they changed it to international women's day and it's treated kind of like valentine's day but it's not the same it's it's mm -hmm. it's it's also you know a celebration of femininity or a celebration of, of of women's importance within society so it's not just interpersonal where you take flowers and all the rest of it although we did see vladimir putin taking bouquets of, of flowers to his uh, military, the, 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 the women in his cabinet, there were all happened to be in uniform on May 8th, or I'm sorry, on March 8th and, and handing out these bouquets of, of flowers, even though we know that, that Vladimir Putin is a notorious misogynist right. who, uh, reportedly beats his, his, uh, partners, uh, even putting one of them in the hospital reportedly. <laughs> right. Um, uh, and here in, and here in Ukraine, it was lovely to see people out on the streets, um celebrating international women's day uh and celebrating the strength of ukrainian women and uh, mm -hmm. the women who are in the armed forces here defending their country um that was a lovely thing to see and also just a lovely thing to see that the the resilience and the determination of the ukrainian people to try right. and maintain some form of normalcy and and find joy amongst all the difficulties they're having so uh a, a belated uh happy international women's day to uh, all those lovely women out there um, who who make our lives that much better? Yeah, and by the way, and to all the uh, Ukrainian women who are uh, retrofitting um, drones and working them. And yeah, the what the the That's woman. That's a great who, story. What is the the she was, started becoming a drone pilot Fif when she, in her fifties at fifty four at, at fifty four. Yeah, she's yeah. A grandmother of three, and mm -hmm. she said, "I'm too old to go and fight on the front, but I could learn how to fly a drone." I mean, right. Mm. Yet another the reason. The spirit why of Olga, the spirit of Olga of Kiev, of Kiev is making my dear, it right. sweet, lovely, beloved Olga, right? Um, you know, is alive and well here in Ukraine. Excellent. Um, so Johnny Million, let's. Uh, we got a couple minutes left, so let's get through some questions if we can. Right on. Yeah. yeah. So I've got one from Lindsay Leiter. Um, what are Phil's thoughts on Macron being a tough guy about Ukraine response and his election year all of a sudden? Yeah, uh, this, you know, it's it's been quite the thing uh, that Macron said there, uh, you know, the possibility of actually sending uh, French troops. He, he kind of walked it back a little bit, but I think it's a, I think, look, I also think that Macron knew exactly what he was doing when he made that statement um, because he, he, he came out and he further, he, he kind of walked some of it back, but then at the same time, he also said, should Russian troops approach Kiev or Odessa and actually threaten those cities that French troops would be sent over here. And that's a safe thing for him to say, because mm -hmm. Russia ain't going to do that. Russia doesn't have the capacity to cr cross the river, much less 
take an urban center of anything larger than 100 or 150,000 people. And even when they are taking cities of that kind of, or towns of that kind of size, uh, they've already been evacuated. If they went into Kharkiv or if they went into Dnipro or Zaporizhia or right. Kherson, all these cities, they would be, fa- they would be facing an occupation and an insurgency and, and they just don't have it in them to go for either Kiev or Odessa. So I think Macron was, was kind of playing the tough guy when it came to that, but it's not really going to happen. Having said that, having said that, it is a good indication that there are European leaders who are starting to wake up to the fact and being very vocal about it. Uh, right. Now, maybe they're not waking up. Maybe you know, they're, they're just becoming vocal about it. Is the fact that this isn't about Ukrainian safety. This is about European safety. And they're recognizing mm-hmm. the threat uh, that, that isn't localized just here in Ukraine. So that's what I take away from, from Macron's uh, statements. And, you know, if they actually did send troops in here, it would, it would, ha- it would probably be in a training capacity or maybe to shore up the, the Northern border with Belarus, freeing up Ukrainian troops to go to the front lines in the East. I don't see French troops actually getting mano a mano uh with with you with russian troops except maybe you know uh, special forces or foreign legion french foreign legion right but uh you know it's it's look it's a it's a it was a pretty bold statement um but i i'm not going to make too much of it yet mm-hmm. um let's grab another one i've got another question this one's yeah. from instagram i don't really have the the name but it's kind of a palate cleanser what are philip's favorite foods in us and ukraine <laughs> well, we all know I love my pickles because mm-hmm. uh, they'll pickle they'll pickle anything here in Ukraine. Yeah, uh, there's a that. there's a we can pickle that. Uh, pickle that. Uh, love love me some pickle. I love uh, that they do uh, pork product uh, here very well. And there's there's a a kind of a there's a bacon that they make a very uh, smoky fatty bacon that they call salo, and it's it's really more fat mm-hmm. than it is bacon. Is that what we had? Uh, I miss, it, the, the, I, we had that? it. And we yeah. had that in Chicago. We had that yeah. in, in little Ukraine in, in Chicago. And we will again. It's tasty. And we will again. Very tasty. Uh, uh, there's vereniki, which are dumplings, and, and you get uh, sweet or savory. Uh, they'll put uh, cherries as a dessert inside. Those are lovely. Uh, that's here in Ukraine, and then as far as American food is concerned, I miss I miss good beef. We don't get good beef here, uh, and uh, I miss a one sauce, and I miss uh, I don't know anything uh, that goes you know, with beef. To... I got I got a general beef picture. Kinda, yeah. I love it. That's so specific. A yeah. one sauce. That's a very unique. Oh, I love a one. I love a one on a steak. Does brown sauce know, kind I... of um, fill that scratch? Yeah, that like for you it, know. It, when I was in the UK, when I used to live in the UK, yeah, absolutely. HP uh, brown sauce, yeah, mm, love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, look, you miss things, you miss things, but that's that's okay. It, it'll be there when I, when the war's over and I can get that's to right. go home. But yeah, uh, when you do come over to Ukraine, anybody who wants to come over, come and try the food. It is it is very good, um, but it is very pork centric. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, one more quick one. What is yep. this is from Ed's 3D Tech? What's the story about Taganrog? I'm glad you brought that up. Um, thank you for the question. Uh, Taganrog, it looks like it may have been an attack on a facility used to repair an, uh, the Antov, uh, Antonov uh, 50, the AN 50, which is the Russian version of an AWACS. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically uh, an intelligence and surveillance gathering uh, airplane uh, that that is that, that has these, you know, all these sensors and coordinating with with air power and and figuring out potential threats. And I think that's important because it's clear that the Ukrainians are focusing on the Antonov uh, 50. And I think, and this is just my personal belief, it's because the F-16s are coming uh, hmm. and the air war is going to change significantly. And if the if they can't fly Antonov 50s, they won't be able to spot the F-16s and they won't be able to co- uh, coordinate an effective air defense with their own Sukhovs, uh, you know, their own SU-34s or whatever. So um, it's interesting that they're targeting the Antonov's uh, 50s, and, and it, I think there's more to it. But we'll have to wait and see. But those F-16s right. are coming. 
Um, uh, appreciate it so much. Uh, we'll, we'll have more to talk about as the week goes on. Uh, thank you so much, Philip Bittner, for joining us. Uh, go to uh, philipbittner.com. Thank you, Texas, Paul. And, yeah, and thanks, Texas Paul, for coming in. Um, mm-hmm. Johnny Million. It's Johnny Million on Twitch and YouTube. And, of course, uh, I'm live streaming at infotainmentwars.com. Thanks and for 1,000 subscribers, Wars. everybody. Did you make it? I did. And I hit 666 Yay. on YouTube. That's amazing. Yay. All right. We're thanks, getting everyone. There. Drip by drip. See you soon. And scene. Thank you guys so much. Uh, okay, there yeah. we go. Mm-hmm. And that was th- nice and well paced and reasonable. We didn't rush our way out the door. Yeah. Nope. Well, you know, uh, you know, Johnny had gotten all of our like swearing crisis out of the way in the first hour. Yeah, so, I pretty oh, much. Did you swear, I did you swear I've, Paul? Wait, I've treated Texas Paul the way I treat you when you first come on. So I was all chill by the time you got here. Yeah, ah! right. You, yeah, you. It, we burned out his uh, rebellious nature. Yeah, yeah. And Fair and enough. can I say the uh, the background uh, didn't crash the show. I I, I was a Yay. little nervous that uh, putting a moving background behind Johnny from here, um, you know, was a, a it was a dangerous thing. I was like walking on eggshells. I'm like, oh dear. Are the fans just whirring on your computers right now? It would kick in every time I would switch. If I, when I moved this your logo around, the fan yeah. on the computers would like, Ooh, like almost <laughs> as I moved it. Yeah, oh, it's fucking horrifying. But I will say, let's see if I can um, jump in here and go to stills and answers. Uh, that I I feel like there's a lot more. You know, it it opens me up to. Let's see if I can open this up. We'll just put uh, this behind Johnny Million at some point. You know, um, there's <laughs> just a lot of options. Little, uh, what is uh, that? Little dark, that's dark Brandon. Um, hold on. Me, oh, nice. Uh, yeah. And then, um, all right, all right, we could just do this one. Hold on. This would be good. Um, Ooh. Yeah. It's it's a little big for the scene. I have to shrink it down Oop, like that and just move it over here. Where are you, little bastard? Yeah. Riding with Biden. There you go. Then, uh, there yeah. You go. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I could I could swap a bunch of stuff out. I mean, what I did, uh, I have to say, and I don't know if you n- saw, but fucking dumb dumb in the so to response from the Republicans wore a gr- a solid green dress. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. Yeah. And and, and I uh, I put a carousel of images behind her. That was uh, Trump with Epstein and uh, Trump less, as less a clown. Less than flattering, yeah. And uh, like, uh, like, God, that, like that that, that Trump picture was her dress at one point. That one, which is a lot of fun. Oh man! And uh, I made her an ad for the uh, sexy liberal. Like she had, she was wearing a sexy liberal comedy tour. Uh, oh, that's nice dress. Of us. Yeah, yeah. So again, yeah, yeah. Get the get the word out, as it were. Um, which was a lot of fun and. I, I mean, it, I I now have a thing in heavy rotation where I can now, you know, shit, I should have I should have done this, which is uh, the picture that I have of of Vladimir Putin awkwardly kissing children in the whole uh, oh, the, uh, the whole like mm-hmm. pedo Putin subcategory where he grabs them mm-hmm. and he holds their face mm-hmm. while he does it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For all the Bi- Biden sniffing uh, children, Very you know, disturbing. because he talks to them. That's the thing. So Biden at these things goes, you're going to be just fine. It's great. He, he leans down and says something to him. And then if he blinks or his eyes are slightly shy, it looks like he's sniffing them. And so they use pictures of him doing this and they take the audio out. Perfect. So you don't hear him talking. And that's one of the ways they get it. Meanwhile, there's <laughs> all you hear is. <laughs> yeah, right. That's yeah. Well, that's Trump doing a line in the background. That's why they think it's it. That was during the debates. So you just hear Trump. You got a crush in Adderall. <laughs> Yeah, just blazing a rail, <laughs> right? Um, and uh, it like it, but there are all these pictures of of Putin being really awkward with kids, um, and it's it, again, it's like that projection. As did you see? Idea. Did you see the the guy from Uganda at the at the Russian uh, whatever anti Russian Russia phobe uh, international conference? Or the I saw images, but I did not. Why? And the, there was a there was a guy from Uganda who said, "Please adopt me, Daddy Putin." Oh wow! I was like, oh uh, my God! What oh, is wrong with you people? Oh, it's an dear. option. Uh-huh. Hey, Daddy. Oh, dear. Uh-huh. Oh, dear. Um, by the way, and that's uh, which is hilarious because uh, you think he doesn't like Asian people. Uh, uh, guess how he feels about black people? 
Yeah. Yep. Again, I don't think people even grasp, like, the, the worst kind of modern racism in the United States pales in comparison to the run-of-the-mill racism in a bunch of other countries. Uh, yeah, not the least of one, other countries. Yeah, not the least of which the, the ones that, for some reason, um, our dear faux-gressive friends seem to mm-hmm. big up all the time, Russia and China and yeah. others. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, because they play, they play lip service to, uh, you know, racial equality. But at the end of the day, when you, you know, don't listen to what they say. Watch, Watch what, what they, they do. do. And, right. and, and, yep. they, and they are condescending fucks when it comes yeah. to, you know, people of color. It's, mm-hmm. and, and yet, yeah, you're right. The faux aggressives fall right in for it. And yeah. They, they think, you know, oh, you know. The, the yeah. Raise your hand imperial if you've been in an America elevator. Raise them. your hand if you've been in an elevator at a Chinese government building with Chinese people who don't know you speak Chinese and Africans who are there on a nation, a national outreach mission trip mm. that the Chinese government yeah, has imagine. paid for who step into the elevator and don't speak Chinese. Yeah. That like yeah. that's some that is some stuff. Uh, growing up in the South, I was I was legitimately shocked. <laughs> like God yeah. damn. Like and, yeah. and I was like and the weird part was I was like, you don't think maybe they sent the couple of them that speak from Africa that speak Chinese? You don't you're you're just gonna assume out yep. of the fucking, it's bad mm-hmm. enough you assume I don't, but fucking hell, you're gonna like. Yeah. I, this might surprise you. There's a lot of multilingual people in Africa. You don't want to at least hedge your bets that they might know what the fuck, or that one of them doesn't have an app on their phone that translates what they fucking hear. Yeah. Right. <laughs> J- Jesus Christ. Uh, yep. Anyways, uh, right, love you guys. Uh, All right, guys. I'm, I've got to go get. All right. I'll talk to you on me. Wednesday. Okay. Great to see you, Phil. You look Th- great. Yep. Thank you, Johnny. All right. Bye, Bye everybody. On Wednesday. Al. Bye. There they go. Off into space, ladies All and right. gentlemen. See you later, Phil. Thank you so much. Um, off they go. There you go. I think he's stuck. It's it's. Uh, are they? Audio for, oh, I see. Uh, and hey, chat room. By the way, uh, let's see. Hold on. Uh, does the chat button work? Yeah, there you are. Hi, uh, chat room. I just wanted to touch base with you guys because I didn't get a chance to. Um, I, I what I could have what could have been a white savior in that list. No, honest to God, um, whatever they were there to do was going to go away. Like you could tell from a business standpoint, the shit was not happening. Um, and what was I going to do? Like go, oh, hey, by the way. You're in danger, <laughs> you know. They either know or they found out later, and I wasn't going to be the one to make them feel like shit that particular day. Um, yeah, 1 p.m. tomorrow, Easter time, uh, Boston Brian has a live stream on Sundays. Check him out. He's working stiff, so that's the that's the day to watch him. There you go. Yes, Johnny Million reached 1,000 subs. Thanks to you guys. I greatly appreciate it. And thank you guys for helping me hit 666. It, it means so, so very much to me and to everyone else. Uh, it's just a, a lovely, lovely thing. I need to shut that video down because it was taxing my system. Um, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, let's see. Hold on. I wanted to show something. This is a, um, Okay, so somebody dug into the story. I just want to leave you on this. Somebody dug into the story that Katie Britt told during her SOTU about the lady in the shoebox room, right? Um, I'll, I'll show you. Hold on one second. Um, yeah, here you, I'll shoot this down. Um, here, this is the kind of essence of the story. Katz is digging turned up some proof that the victim didn't experience the attacks on American soil, but he also found that the timeline proved Biden wasn't even in office. Uh, there was a trip, uh, that Britt took along with Marsha Blackburn, um, along with Cindy Hyde Smith to the Del Rio sector back in last January, all documented on Blackburn's website. He, he then cross-referenced the details and found the name Carla Yacinto Romero, 
apparently they couldn't say her name, who is described as being pimped by a 22-year-old man at the age of 12 and enslaved until the age of 16 in brothels, roadside motels, and homes in Guadalajara and other cities in Mexico. These events didn't happen in the United States, said Katz. These crimes didn't take place in the United States or even near the border. They took place in Mexico. Uh, uh, and they also took place, according to Romero's recounting before Congress, between 2004 and 2008. Biden didn't become president, uh, vice president until 2009. The president at the time uh, Romero was kidnapped and ultimately rescued was George W. Bush. Um, this isn't going to make her like TikTok more because somebody did a TikTok video on it. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, you know, we talked about this like I met a woman who voted. I'm like, OK, if she was a woman and it happened, it started when she was 12. Clearly, uh, Biden wasn't president or vice president during that time or whatever and again trump would deport that woman trump wants that woman kicked out he doesn't want her asylum case adjudicated he wants her gone a uh, mass deportation what part of mass deportation doesn't uh, does uh, i guess the uncommitted crowd not understand yeah very weird so anyways, uh, the latest victim they can find. I guess not, because it, it's a, it's an older story. She just chose to tell it. And again, I got news for you. Um, to quote Rocky, the world is a mean and nasty place, and it will beat you to your knees and keep you there um, uh, unless you keep moving forward. And there are plenty of stories that you could bring up if you want to it, create an anecdotal mythology that somehow things are worse here than they are everywhere else or whatever. I mean, you it, it's like the most beautiful person in the world. If you use a microscope and get close enough to their skin, you'll find something gross. That's just how shit works, right? You can, it, it, we know this. So if you're in the bullshitting and fake news business as she is, do a better job. Jesus Christ. Like that's, that was a, what a swing and a miss. Um, I mean, like, the fact that it takes you, like, you're going to be that gross and that wrong. It's just, ugh. Um, let's see. The, and, uh, yeah, here you go. Um, this is the other piece of good news from the, uh, um, that haven't, hasn't really been brought up in the, uh, in the polls storyline that you're hearing everywhere all of a sudden, uh, Trump warned by pollster that wavering voters hate him a little bit more. Yeah, those those independents and those uh, those moms, you know, the that he's always worried about the the ones that Katie Britt was supposed to bring back into the fold. Apparently, I I, I, don't, I think this was probably done before her thing, but I know she didn't help. Um, according to a conservative poll, uh, political strategist and polling expert, Sarah Longwell, both Donald Trump and President Joe Biden have a problem with voters who are unhappy about their choices in the upcoming presidential election and it is worse news for the four-time indicted former president. Speaking with CNN's host, Chris Wallace, Longwell discussed voters uh, label, lo, uh, labeled double haters in New York Times Siena College poll that pegged their number at a whopping 19% of the electorate. That huge number is where the election will be won or lost, she explained. I want to talk to you about something I've been hearing in terms of the last few days in the news to me. Double haters. I want to put up a poll. I have to say, I like this. It fits the campaign perfectly. In a New York Times poll, 19% were described as double haters because they disapprove of both Biden and Trump. And Biden is, correct, currently leading among double haters, 45 to 33%. So Sarah and the double haters are a real thing. And uh, who's going to end up uh, winning the double haters? Yes. So I conducted uh, focus groups all the time. And the double haters are absolutely a real thing. In fact, because we have this phenomenon here, where you essentially have two incumbents running against each other, the persuadable chunk of voters is different this time. It's people who have, uh, they, they know both these guys and they don't like either. And so that's why this is going to be a real negative campaign because persuadable voters, to bring them over, you're going to have to make them hate the other guy more. The phrase we hear in focus groups all the time is if it was a drinking game, that we'd all be dead, is the, uh, is the first lesser of two evils. And what they mean is, I'm basically going to make my decision on who I hate slightly less. And Biden usually cleans up on that front because people hate Trump a little bit more. And this is just in the wavering group. This is, and, and, and part of that wavering group um, includes Haley voters and people who were formerly Republican and just are too fucking embarrassed to call themselves that. Because there's a bunch of, you know, what I would call like air quotes, 
Republican or independents, air quotes, independents who are really Republicans. Honestly, that's how they always vote. But this time around, they're so fucking embarrassed by buying into, you know, George W. Bush's yellow cake bullshit and Donald Trump's Mexico will pay for the wall and I'll stop being gross the minute I'm president and I'll be more presidential, all that shit. It, they're so embarrassed by and because they can still feel shame, apparently. They're still embarrassed by it enough where it's going to affect how they'll talk about it. Whether it changes how they actually vote once they're in the room, that's a different story. We'll see. I think it will. I think a lot of them are, are going to be surprisingly conscience voters. Hold on. Is Trump doing a fucking... This is not... Yeah, no. Ugh. Now, you've got all this information on Joe Biden. Yeah. By the way. What can we do? Like, what's next to get that on the floor for a vote? Well, we have to finish our investigation on the Oversight Committee. I serve on the Oversight Committee. We have a very important public hearing that's coming up later this month in March. Yeah, super exciting. Yeah, it's going to it's going to nail them on stuff that they haven't gotten in private under oath testimony. Uh, we will have Hunter Biden back for a public hearing on oversight. There's going to be some other witnesses. Former. Why would it be oversight? Wouldn't. I mean, I, I guess if you're oversight of the presidency, is that where they're going? Even though Trump doesn't think they should have any, which I think is also hilarious. But uh, he is a private citizen and always has been. Our business partners of his that will be there for that public hearing. Um, so we're hoping everyone tunes in and watches that. Yeah, because you don't have real evidence. So you want to like try to do a game show version of this bullshit. So anyways, that's that's currently right. I guess Trump's doing a quote, get out the vote campaign in Georgia. Everybody's launching in Georgia. Um, I it, He got he got out the vote out of out of the Republican party, um, out, out of the business of voting. Most of, uh, you know, there's a sizable chunk of people, not only that voted for Haley, but a bunch of people who don't believe in actually voting anymore because they think it's rigged and that Biden's going to rig it and all that shit. So nice. This, this is good. Um, anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. I got to go get, uh, poked. I'm just saying, uh, but I want to thank everybody for, uh, the six, six, six. Um, it, it means a lot. Um, on so many fronts, I just want to say, um, and, and I, I want to tell you that reaching 66.6 thousand subscribers hasn't changed me. I'm, I'm still the same old pallid, ah, I'm showing, <laughs> sorry, I, sometimes I relax too much and the spell wears off. <laughs> um, but, uh, it's not my fault though. I, I blame the kidney. go and take a look at the oranges the diversity lottery i know words i have the best words combat infantry bin i know words i have the best words real bipartisan solutions i know words i have the best words criminal look look wait they throw Lots of hard objects, and I know rarely does anything happen. Our army manned the air. It ran the ramparts. It took over the airports.